The NFL on CBS brings us to San Diego and action today from the AFC West. The Denver Broncos at 5-5 five and five against the 4-6 and six San Diego Chargers. It's week 12 in the NFL. Up to the minute standings, Oakland leading the division by one game over Denver. There, San Diego Chargers, a five-game losing streak in Kansas City, also at four and six. The weather here in Southern California, it is spectacular. 84 degrees, no wind to speak of, and we're expecting sunny skies throughout the day. I and Eagle along with Hall of Famer Dan Fouts, the rest of our CBS crew, and a San Diego native. John Fox, head coach of the Denver Broncos, attended Castle Park High School about 20 minutes from here. Norv Turner, he has seen his team go from first place to last in the AFC West over the last six weeks. Denver won the toss and deferred to the second half. Matt Prater just kicked it out of the end zone. San Diego will have it at the 20-yard line, and Phillip Rivers, uncharacteristic. All the turnovers. He leads the NFL with 17 interceptions this season. Yeah, he told us yesterday it's important the Chargers score when they get their opportunities. They got to stay aggressive offensively and hopefully get a lead. Too often the Chargers have found themselves trailing and having every possession become critical, and that has led to a number of turno turnovers from Rivers. Longest losing streak since the start of the 0-3 season when they opened up 0-5. Shotgun formation for Rivers to throw on first down and slings the ball to Antonio Gates, gets him involved on the first play from scrimmage. Just underway here in San Diego, the Chargers and the Broncos. Denver riding a three-game winning streak. Broncos started the season at one and four, then moved to two and five. Had an embarrassing loss at the hands of the Detroit Lions, but since then, Tim Tebow has led them to three straight wins, and Tebow four and one since becoming the starting quarterback. Ryan Matthews getting the carry and covers three yards on the game. Von Miller with a tackle. Let's get an NFL Today update as we head to New York. And JB. Cleveland's last effort to try to beat Cincinnati, Shannon. Colt McCoy is back. He's looking for Joshua Cribs. Kelly Jennings is on the spot. Knocks it down. Cincinnati holds on. 23-20 over the Browns, JB. They move to 74. That they do. And let's take it back to Ian and Dan. All right, James and Shannon will have updates throughout the day here. First possession of the afternoon for the San Diego Chargers. A double tight end set. Gates with McMichael. Rivers throws incomplete. He was looking to hit his man on the far side. Vincent Brown, the rookie out of San Diego State, and Andre Goodman in coverage for Denver. Goodman came real close to picking that ball off. It was kind of up for grabs between the two of them. Good job by Brown preventing that interception. That would have been a disastrous start for the Chargers and Phillip Rivers. Second and ten for the Chargers. No score. Broncos and Chargers. Early stages of this opening quarter at Qualcomm. Matthews and Hester in the backfield. Matthews gets the carry. And Matthews bursting through a hole. Out across the 40-yard line. Brought down just as he hit the 45 for a 14-yard gain. Brandon Dombrowski with a key block. Offensive line, it's been in shambles because of injuries. Steven Schilling is getting the start. He actually started on the right side last week. And now Tony Maul is on the right. Tyrone Green down with an injury, so that's why Schilling is there. Rookie out of Michigan. Backs and receivers. Antonio Gates did not play the last time these two teams met, which was San Diego's last win. They've since lost five in a row. And a first down for the Chargers on the move. First and ten from the 45. Keep it on the ground for Matthews. Tries the right side. Finds a crease and Matthews zigzags his way into Denver territory. Forced out of bounds at the 40-yard line. That's a 15-yard rip for Ryan Matthews. Defensively for Denver. Much improved since the beginning of the year. They've gotten healthier. Broderick Bunkley has been a difference maker. Came over in that trade with Philadelphia. Linebackers Von Miller, the number two pick overall in the AFC Defensive Player of the Week after his performance against the Jets. That 17-13 comes from behind win. And in the secondary, keep an eye on Champ Bailey dealing with Vincent Jackson. They've had great matchups through the years. Bailey's been to the Pro Bowl ten times. NFL record among cornerbacks. On first down, Tolbert now in there for San Diego. 
Matt Tolbert hits the hole. Five-yard gain, just short of the 35. Joe Mays, the first man there for Denver. Very impressive opening drive for the Chargers, and they're doing it on the ground. They've run six plays so far. Four of them have been running plays. Matthews averaging 10 yards a carry, and that was a good first down carry for Tolbert, picking up five. North Turner. Talked to him about the offensive line. He said, sure, it's been a major challenge when you only have two starters in there, but Phillip Rivers is such an upbeat guy, and uh, he's treated them like their starters and trying to instill confidence in them. Deep drop. Rivers throwing a deep ball over the shoulder. Gates can't locate it. It's incomplete. Quinton Carter, the safety, had the coverage, and Gates had a bit of separation there. So the offensive line, no Marcus McNeil, no Tyrone Green, no Luis Vasquez. Dealman out with a concussion placed on injured reserve. Murkowski had stepped in. He's now on IR as well because of a concussion. And the offensive line did a good job last week against the Chicago Bears, who are more of a power pass rushing team. The Broncos present a lot of speed, especially with Doomerville and Von Miller. Just saw Dealman and Vasquez watching from the sidelines on a third and five. Forced out of the pocket. Rivers on the move, and Rivers throws it away. Right now, San Diego would be looking at a 53-yard field goal attempt. Nick Novak's career long is 52. Jason Hunter supplied the heat and, on Phillip Rivers. And Turner's going to give Novak that shot. This would be uh, very important for San Diego after this drive stalls and two incomplete passes, but good pass rush that time by the Broncos coming around a corner, forcing Rivers out of the pocket. Not where he wants to be. Novak missed a 55-yard field goal at the end of the first half last week in the loss to Chicago. Looking for a new career high. 53-yard attempt for Novak. He's got it. Chargers on the board. And they have something to show for the opening drive here at home. 3 0 lead for San Diego. Pivotal AFC West game. San Diego just trying to stay in the hunt and stop the losing streak. They've got the early lead. Nine play, 45 yard drive for San Diego. Ryan Matthews had 32 rushing yards on that drive. And a 3 0 lead after the Novak field goal. Novak kicking off. Cassius Vaughn averaging 29 yards in return. Tripped up as he hit the perimeter. And brought down just short of the 30-yard line. Well, the bandwagon has been growing for Tebow Media. Tim Tebow and the Denver Broncos offense on the field when we come back to San Diego. Can you get into the holiday spirit when it's 83 degrees out? It's football weather, my friend. Yeah. San Diego style. Tim Tebow coming off the 17-13 win Go. over the Jets. They rallied to do it on a 20-yard touchdown by Tebow at the end of the game. Handoff to Willis McGay, who right up the middle. And carries to the 35-yard line for a gain of seven. Tebow. The results have been there, 4-1 and one as a starter this season. He did get a start last year against San Diego. Hey, he told his decision-making. He's got to be a good decision-maker today. Get the Broncos in and out of the correct play. And when asked to throw, know when to throw it in there to his receivers, know when to throw it away. And, of course, he knows when to tuck it and run. He actually came into the game early in the season against San Diego, trying to lead the Broncos back, and nearly did. And another handoff for McGahee, taking it to the outside for a gain of three very close to first down yardage. Take a look at the Denver starting offense. They have kept their offensive line intact every game. The same starting group, including the rookie out of Miami, Orlando Franklin, on the right side of the line. McGahee is now an offensive captain after they released Kyle Orton, who was eventually picked up by Kansas City. McGahee got the nod. He had finished behind Orton for the captain voting before the season, and John Fox decided to go back One. to that voting. So McGahee now an offensive captain for the Broncos, and a first down for Denver. McGahee slicing 
Up the gut across the 45 yard line, giving a gain of seven on the play. Defensively for San Diego, Vaughn Martin continues to start for the injured Luis Castillo out with a tibia injury. San Diego hoping to get Castillo back at some point this season. Linebacker Sean Phillips is back after missing four consecutive games with a foot injury. That's good news for San Diego. And defensively, Antoine Kaysen had a kick last week in that loss to Chicago. Marcus Gilchrist is inactive because of a hamstring injury. Spencer Larson getting an opportunity for a four-yard pickup and an opportunity for us to check out the Fouts focus this week, and it's Tim Tebow. Well, for Tebow and the Broncos running the options as elementary as the three R's. So he needs to read the defense as he moves down the line of scrimmage. Next is reaction to how the defense plays him is key. And finally, once he makes his decision, hit the whole full speed is critical. The option as simple as read, react, and run. Since Tebow has become the starter, Denver's averaging an NFL best 208 rushing yards per game. Lance Ball with a five-yard game. Travis LeBoy there defensively. They will mix and match, going with different players rotating out of the backfield. Five plays so far, all running plays for Denver. Here are the numbers on Tim Tebow as a starting quarterback. And they're off to a great start right now. You talked about those five straight runs. I had 28 yards on those. And really, each play, they have given San Diego a different style of run. One game behind Oakland in the AFC West. They have resurrected their season. McGay, who runs into his own man, tries to cut. And not a lot there. Gain of a half yard on the play. Steve Gregory among those there defensively for San Diego. And in talking to defensive coordinator Greg Minuski, he says, we'll load the box with what we have until Tebow shows us otherwise. We really can't change things up too much because Denver uses a lot of different personnel. But he had to go back to his college days of playing against the option as a linebacker himself and as a uh, defensive coordinator. Yeah, that's what Takeo Spikes told us. We looked a lot at that Florida film to prepare for this one against Tebow in addition to the games that he started this season. Three receivers set. Tebow to throw for the first time. A low throw. Incomplete. Trying to hit to Marius Thomas. And the Broncos drive stalls in San Diego territory. And even if Thomas is able to make this catch, he's short of the first down. He ran his route at about four yards. They needed five. So an error by Demarius Thomas and an off-target throw from Tebow. Britton Colquitt will punt it. Patrick Creighton is deep, averaging just over 10 yards per return with a long of 31 this season. Colquitt, third in the NFL in net punting average, over 41 yards per punt. And puts this one beautifully inside the 10. And that's where San Diego's going to have it. Chargers with a 3 0 lead. More first quarter action when we return on CBS. Got a sports fan on your list? Avoid the crowds with CBSSports.com shop. And this week, only get free standard shipping. Enter CBS free during checkout at shop.cbsports.com. And welcome back here in San Diego. Ian Eagle along with the Hall of Famer, Dan Fouts, and the way things are lined up in the AFC West. San Diego, five straight losses, yet they get a win here, and they're right back in the thick of things. Yeah, and Denver, the surprise team so far in the AFC West, the way they've played with Tebow. And that's what I'm anxious to see the rest of the day, how this plays out. They had a great start to the game running the ball, but on the one pass he had to throw, it was off target, and the Broncos could not pick up the first down. So that's always been the story with Tebow. We'll see how he reacts against the San Diego defense this afternoon and Dan the national debate has been is this the long-term answer and the reality for Denver is it's the answer right now they're winning games they're in the hunt in the AFC West obviously those questions have to be answered down the road but for now it's been effective Philip Rivers and the Chargers oh, offense yeah. uh, first and ten at their own nine yard line with a three nothing lead it is to Matthews, not much there, and Matthews gets driven backwards as he just crossed the 10-yard line for a gain of a yard, yard and a half. Vaughn Miller, physical, some pushing and shoving after the play. Miller actually fined this week for a hit that he had on Mark Sanchez, which was not flagged, but he got hit with a big fine, $25,000 for 
this hit on but, Thursday night against Sanchez. And what he does is he drops his uh, crown of his helmet right into the back of Sanchez. It's been a uh, point of emphasis, and obviously a, a financial point of emphasis now for Vaughn Miller to not lead with your head. I think that's fine earlier in the season as well. But Miller's reputation is growing as an impact player. Matthew is on the outside as he tried to hit the perimeter for a three yard game. DJ Williams over there to make the stop for the Denver Broncos. AFC playoff picture right now. Baltimore got the win on Thursday at eight and three. Houston gets the win eight and three. There's New England and Oakland, Pittsburgh and Cincinnati currently holding down the wild cards. Jets beat Buffalo. And you see where San Diego and Denver fit into the mix. 3-0 lead for the Chargers. Third and six for Norv Turner's team. We need a fourth and for Louis. From the gun, Rivers. A little bit of movement on the right side of the San Diego line. Incomplete. Vincent Brown, the intended receiver. Strong coverage there from Andre Goodman. Yeah, you can hear Nick Hardwick, the center for the Chargers, switching the protection to the left side. And it just seemed to throw the timing of the uh, Chargers pass offense off on this play. The coverage by Goodman couldn't have been better as Vincent Brown could not drive him off and uh, pick up that first down. Dan injury update on the opening kickoff. Cash is gone. Ankle injury. His return is questionable. And that would be a big hit. Juan Cosby, one of their other returners, is inactive. Today. Cypher's punt. Big kick. Eddie Royal, plenty of room as he catches at the 25, makes his move at the 35, and able to accelerate just short of the 40 yard line. Pretty good field position after the 62 yard punt and a 13 yard return. 3 0 Chargers in front of the Broncos. Picture perfect weekend here in San Diego. The Chargers with a 3 0 lead on Denver, 540 to play in the first quarter. Last win for the Chargers came against Denver on October the 9th, 29 to 24. On first down, we've seen an extra offensive lineman, Chris Clark, sixth offensive lineman for Denver. A handoff, stutter step move by Willis McGahee, and McGahee keeps the legs turning. And they finally whistled the play dead as McGahee stayed on his feet to the 45-yard line. Let's go back to the incomplete pass on the last series of plays for the Broncos and watch Tim Tebow overstride on this throw and then really aim the ball. He talked to us yesterday about the things he's working on, his accuracy. So it starts with his footwork, staying balanced, keeping both his knees bent, pressing off the back leg, a short step and using his base. That time he overstrided and threw errantly. It sounded like a golf swing almost. There's a lot of checks in that list, aren't there? There were six different aspects to his accuracy in his own head as he prepares for games. McGahee running into a pile and he picks up four Whoa, yards McGahee. and he's got a first down out near the 50 yard line. Very impressive start for Willis McGahee as uh, they get into that pile and the offensive lineman they find him they know he's not going to go down easily they just keep pushing the pile and they push two piles in a row all the way to midfield. McGay who had 125 rushing yards in the first meeting against San Diego. He's going to get a breather here and Lance Ball undrafted free agent has bounced around practice squads with St. Louis and Indianapolis, Tennessee from a Maryland Terrapin getting an opportunity here. Flea flicker. Tebow steps. Tebow throwing. Deep ball. Eric Decker can't haul it in. Eric Weddle back there defensively. And that was a good throw by Tebow right to the hands of Decker, but Weddle coming over from his weak safety spot. Chargers were not fooled by the flea flicker, but this is a heck of a throw by Tebow. He's not thinking about that checklist here. He's just hauling off and letting it rip. And just a little bit overthrown for the six foot three Decker. So you had two safeties in on that play with Gregory and Weddle. And sets up second and long for Denver. Eddie Royal shifting to the backfield. Fake it that way. Now Tebow, option. He's got a hole. Tebow still on his feet. 
trying to circle actually went backwards but will be enough for a first down Antoine Kaysen eventually makes the stop give Tebow 11 yards on the carry yeah it's it's really important for the Chargers to play assignment football against this option there was nobody for the quarterback that time as Tebow comes down the line of scrimmage here you can see the great block on the end right there and now it's just pure athletic ability but Tebow realizes here that he may have given up the first down stretches out and picks it up. Well, Turner said with Tebow, he just has a knack for making the first man miss. He's been running this style of offense for so long, it's just comfortable to him. Whereas McGahee gets the call, nothing there, a one-yard gain. And, and to defense this, you need strong play from your safeties and your outside linebackers. That time, Corey Legit, the defensive end on that side, got blocked. Line, there was no linebacker. Sean Phillips, who's just back into the Charger lineup after injury was not there and uh, Tebow had a huge lane Tebow with 550 rushing yards in his first eight NFL starts that is a new record for quarterbacks in league history Jeremiah Johnson is in second and nine Tebow on the option the cut and had a very tight window to work with as he leaned forward Travis LeBoy stuck with it and Tebow had something to say to the officials as he went down it's a two yard gain now Tebow may have complained about having his face mask grabbed right yep about there but a better job of defensing the option here yep that's a face mask that was not called the boy with the right hand gets away with one brings up a huge third down for Denver Denver just 32 percent this season converting third downs third and seven inside the San Diego 40. This is a four receiver set for Tebow with a play clock winding down. From the gun, Tebow fires, drop. Lunging attempt by Eddie Royal, and it would have been enough for a first down across the 30. Instead, Denver once again has to pump the ball away. Yeah, it's a little bit different catching it from a lefty. Ball spins differently, and if it's out of spiral, it can be very difficult but that's just a plain drop by Eddie Royal that's a good throw to the outside away from the defense by Tebow would have been enough for the first down as well this would have been a 56 yard field goal attempt for Matt Prady they elect to pump the ball and play the field position game here with San Diego Britton Colquitt Fair catch called for for Patrick Creighton inside the 10. So once again, Denver has pinned San Diego deep in its own territory. 3-0 Chargers lead. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Three-game winning streak for the Denver Broncos, and they've used this formula. Play the field position game. Trust your defense, which has been much improved for the Denver Broncos. And now for San Diego, maybe into making a mistake, keeping their own territory on a pitch. Ryan Matthews bowling over a player. Von Miller there defensively, and a flag is thrown. Jeff Triplett will hear from him for the first time today. He would suspect that this would be holding, and is it that is against going? San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. Eagle loose the hands, oh, yeah. hands in the face. Number 66 of the offense. That penalty is declined. Second down. Jeremy Clary called on the penalty. Since 2007, NFL Play 60 has been traveling the country, helping the youth of America to be more active and healthy. This spring, the NFL Play 60 bus will come to a new deserving community, and it could be yours. To find out more, visit nflrush.com slash bus. So rather than... At the first and 14, they'll take the second and eight by turning the penalty down. And Rivers throws incomplete. And Rivers may have drawn the Broncos off sides like there was movement into the neutral zone. So back to back plays will have penalty flags down. Offside defense number 92 lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, repeat second down. Yeah, you got it. Elvis Doomerville just bouncing back from various injuries and playing at a high level. 
Watch the uh, just a little bit of movement right there gets him into that neutral zone. Good job by Rivers. Domerville shoulder and ankle issues this year. Missed all of last season with a torn pectoral muscle. And a second and three for San Diego. And another jump by Denver, this time on the other side. And a handoff for Matthews who barrels ahead. But no flag. No flag. Robert Ayers there defensively. Close to a first down. And we are under a minute to play now in this first quarter. Well, because of all the running plays, this quarter has just flown by. Yeah, that's the thing about the Denver style right now. It might not be pleasing to the eye. It might not be the prettiest. But it's translated into wins. And you get home earlier. <laughs> That's true. Are you are you keeping an eye on the clock? Or? <laughs> Three nothing Chargers in front. We're going to measure this one just short of the 20 yard line. Dan Fouts has to make his way down to the field for halftime. Junior Seau is being honored, inducted into the Chargers Hall of Fame. Yeah, one of the great greatest Chargers of all time, Junior Seau. He will have his banner unveiled. At halftime, well deserved. A lot next of your stop will be Canton, Ohio. Yeah, a lot of your buddies are here. Alumni Day here in San Diego. Yeah, it's a great tradition that the Chargers have uh, maintained over the years, and it's good to see the old guys and the young guys. Yeah, good to see number 14 hanging up there as well. I saw some creases. Though. I'd like to maybe steam that. <laughs> With the wind Just blowing that out. Okay, <laughs> third and one. For the Chargers. They crowd the line. Rivers moving pocket. And Rivers got the angle for a first down. Robert Ayers giving chase. And a new set of downs for San Diego to work with. A great job by Denver's defense not being fooled on that play action. Rivers uh, rolling out to his right after the fake. He has, sees a receiver who's double covered now. Full panic mode. As he shows he can run too, picks up the first down by putting the ball in his left hand and stretching across that line to gain. <laughs> he did not get it by much. And if he doesn't stretch out with the left hand, I don't think he does get it. Phillip Rivers so far, one of five for eight yards. Sacked five times in the first meeting against Denver. In stride, Randy McMichael. Bang down just short of the 40 yard line. That one covers 20 yards on the catch and run. And that'll be the end of the first quarter here at Qualcomm. 3 0, the Chargers leading the Broncos. Second quarter action coming up when we return to San Diego after these messages. The NFL on CBS. Start of the second quarter here at Qualcomm Stadium, which opened back in 1967. Chargers and the Broncos, a showdown here on CBS. I and Eagle, Dan Fouts, rest of our CBS crew. Pitch to Ryan Matthews. Matthews veers to the outside. Good blocks on that right side from Tony Mall, the veteran formerly of Green Bay and Baltimore, and Jeremy Clary to help spring Matthews loose for a gain of eight. Yeah, they've had success getting wide against this Bronco defense, which uh, you wouldn't expect because of the speed of the Denver defense. But the Chargers getting good blocking, as you said. Mall, good, good quickness from his right guard position, got out in front. Key fumble last week for Matthews in the third quarter. He's actually fumbled the football nine times and has lost five in his first 21 games as a pro. Second and two. To keep it on the ground. It's a first down run for Matthews. Physical going up the middle for a five yard gain as we head to New York. JB and Shannon Sharp. Sustained drive by New England. Yes, down 10 0. Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis, the law firm in New England. Four yard TD run, 10 7. Eagles over the Patriots. 12 plays, 80 yards led to that score. Ian Eagle and Dan Fouts. And guys, the question, who is the best team in the AFC? At times, it's looked like New England. At times, it's looked like Pittsburgh or Baltimore. Every week, we've got a variety of opinions out there based on how the team performed that specific week. Shotgun formation on a full receiver set. And Rivers underneath connects with Vincent Jackson. Finally dragged down. He picked up extra yardage as he brought the pro bowler Brian Dawkins with him. 
for a gain of 15. Should have been a pickup of seven or eight. Andre Goodman, number 21, in tight man-to-man -man coverage here. That just shows you the size and strength of Vincent Jackson. 235 pounds at six foot five. Easily spun away from Goodman. We asked Jackson about Phillip Rivers and all the speculation about the injury and why Rivers has not played up to the numbers and the level that he's been accustomed to. He said, hey, he's the same guy. He hasn't done anything different. Same routine, same person in the huddle. Circumstances affect the statistics. Nobody inside the Chargers facility doubts it. But I give to Ryan Matthews, and Jason Hunter was right there. No gain on the play for Matthews, second and ten. Be interesting to see the battle between Champ Bailey and Vincent Jackson as this game goes along. It's interesting to see that uh, they had Goodman on Jackson, but that's because Jackson was lined up in the slot, and Champ would rather play to the outside. But it's been a good battle throughout the years between those two. Yeah, Jackson said he likes lining up in the slot. It's been effective, and he, he just lines up all over the place. The unpredictability has been nice. It's been feast or famine, though, for Jackson. Handoff to Tolbert. Mike Tolbert almost broke to the clear. Quinton Carter, the rookie out of Oklahoma, got him down low. Vincent Brown with a good block and Randy McMichael to get Tolbert going for nine yards. Great vision by Tolbert. Started to the, his left, the right side of the screen. Then he'll cut all the way back behind Jer Jeremy Clary. And if this uh, tackle is not made that time by Quinton Carter, Tolbert gets real close to going all the way to the end zone. Great tackle by Carter. Tenth play of the drive, which started on the San Diego nine-yard line. They are now inside the Denver 25 in the third and one. Crowd the box. Up the middle, Hester for a first down. Nineteenth carry on the season for Jacob Hester. He picks up two yards, and the drive remains alive for San Diego. And, and that's uh, an area where the Chargers have done well this year is on picking up third downs. Nearly 50% conversion rate there. And Hester with the just a quick little belly play up the middle. Picked it up and it keeps the drive alive for San Diego. Now this is a San Diego team that got known for their slow starts. Ironically, this year they started right, four and one. Man. Now they're at four and six in the last place in the AFC West. But still hey, time to turn things around considering the way the teams are bunched together in the division. Ryan Matthews. Looked like he had a head of steam, but Mitch Unrein caught him down by the ankles. It's a two-yard gain. If you haven't seen one of this season's most talked about shows, tonight is your chance. Catch back-to-back -back episodes of Person of Interest right here, only CBS. Long drive for the San Diego Chargers, bridging the first and second quarters. 10.25 to play until halftime, and a 3-0 lead for San Diego. Second and eight. Rivers to throw. Curl up field by Vincent Brown has become an important part of this offense with that injury to Malcolm Floyd working against Champ Bailey and very close to first down yardage. Yeah, and just a rookie out of San Diego State, but Vincent Brown runs very sharp routes. Watch him pivot away from Champ Bailey, and now he's thinking, man, I can just get by him. I can get in the end zone. You're not going to get by Champ Bailey very often, but that's a huge pickup. On his first reception of the day for Vincent Brown. And it is enough for a first down. So a first and 10 now at the Denver 12 yard line. And this offensive line is doing a good job run blocking and pass protection for Phillip Rivers. Three backups in there for San Diego on the offensive line. From the gun, Rivers, quick hitter. He's got Brinkley who gets caught by Joe Mays, the inside linebacker, formerly of the Philadelphia Eagles. It's a five yard gain for Brinkley. That's a heck of a job by uh, Mays because he was lined up a long way away from Brinkley. He just sprinted to the outside. There's Brinkley with the uh, catch and the tackle by Mays. Heck of a job by Mays. Second and five now at the seven yard line of Denver. You see the play distribution on this drive. Nine rushes, four passes. On second down from the gun. It's a pitch. 
Brinkley fighting. Oh, he gets hit by D.J. Williams. Stood up and brought down hard. Now this Denver defense is playing with a ferocity, and they continue to gain confidence every week. Uh, D.J. Williams, who was a heck of a high school running back really? De La Salle High School in Concord. Hmm. <laughs> he knows how to punish a running back, doesn't he? That was a pile driver by D.J. Williams on the stop. Third and four. Empty backfield. Chargers trying to add to their lead. Rivers throws. End zone. Caught by Gates. Touchdown, San Diego. Antonio Gates did not play in the first meeting between these two teams. And he has an impact in this first half to put the Chargers in front. 9-0, waiting on the extra point. Yeah, nobody's better than Antonio Gates in the red zone. Just does such a great job moving his feet. Little jerk route that time. Got in the back of the end zone. How about the pass protection for Phillip Rivers? You know, he was for that drive iron. He was just one out of five. And he hit six different receivers on that drive. So Rivers now 6 of 10, 63 yards and a touchdown. Nick Novak, who had the long field goal to put San Diego on the board, tacks on the extra point and a 10-0 lead for the Chargers. 7, 58 remaining in a fast-moving first half here in San Diego. 15 plays, 91 yards for the Chargers. Fourth touchdown of the season for the seven-time Pro Bowler Antonio Gates, capping off that 15-play, 91-yard drive. Eight minutes and 47 seconds off the clock. And now San Diego will kick it off. Phillip Rivers with his 16th touchdown pass of the year. Eddie Royal is in as the returner. He's going to take it out of the end zone. Royal, one career touchdown on a kick return and two flags. Three flags are down as Royal takes it across the 30-yard line. Now, Richard Goodman was just tackled. Cody, number 75 of the return team at the distance of the goal. First down. So Clark called on the penalty. Tim Tebow on the Broncos offense back on the field. When we come back, San Diego. You want to call it a must win at this point? It is considering the standings of the AFC West. Since 2007, NFL Play 60 has been the league's initiative in helping the youth of America to be more active and healthy. Back on November the 15th, Randy McMichael and several other Chargers visited Memorial Preparatory for scholars and athletes to participate in the Play 60 Ultimate PE class as part of the NFL's Play 60 Super School program. Memorial was named as an NFL Play 60 Super School and received a 10 thousand dollar grant the nfl doing great work around the country with the play 60 program first and 10 for denver tim tebow is yet to complete a pass he is 0 of three he does have 12 yards on the ground flag down and this play never gets going cleanly willis mcgahee as the play is whistled dead and the crowd got loud and forced the broncos for, into a false start false start number 75 with the offense Half the distance of the goal, still first down. And it's Chris Clark, who was the sixth offensive lineman for Denver on that first down. He talks about it. Tico being 0 for 3. This was a close to being a completion. Eric Weddle will come over the top of Eric Decker there. And then Eddie Royal just drops this ball. It should have been a first down. But Tebow has two rushes this afternoon for 12 yards. He's backed up now, though. First and 13 for Denver. Give it to McGahee, and he is stuffed. He crosses the five-yard line. Spikes combining with LeBoy to bring him down after a two-and-a-half-yard game. Well, this is where it's going to be interesting for Tebow and the Broncos, especially with this type of field position. Will they just stick with the run and play the field position game, although they're down 10 nothing now? Yeah, Tebow talked about this team's resolve and the fact that they believe in one another. John Elway, the executive VP of football operations, getting a closer look with the binoculars. No matter what the situation, there has been a belief for Denver, especially in the fourth quarter. Play fake. Tebow. Tebow throwing on the move. 
incomplete out along the sideline. It was actually picked off, but Gregory was clearly out of bounds. It'll be third and long for the Broncos. And Tebow just teasing the Charger defense in the end zone, looking for the sack that would result in a safety. Tebow with great awareness and strength, but this ball is too close to being intercepted. So now third and ten. It was Kaysen over there defensively for San Diego. Ten nothing Chargers in front and even seven minutes to play in the second quarter. Spread the field. Tebow out of the gun. Delay a game. Play clock hit double zero. Delay of game. Offense number 15. After this is the goal. Still third down. And the crowd getting so loud that uh, J.D. Walton, the center for the Broncos, could not hear Tebow, who's just gesturing and screaming, snap the ball because Tebow can see the play clock running down. Third and 13. Tebow. Designed run for the quarterback, and there's nothing there. The Chargers all over it. Dante Hughes limiting Tebow for a gain of four. Yeah, very conservative call by Mike McCoy, offensive coordinator for the Broncos. A little bit nervous about having Tebow throwing out of his end zone after the last play was almost picked off. Good hustle by Dante Hughes. And Denver really leaning on its defense now. First seven games, the Broncos allowed 29 points per game. The last three, they're allowing less than 16. They've only given up 10 here, but they just have not mustered much offense in this first half. As Colquitt punts to Creighton. And along the sideline, they'll have it in Denver territory to open up this possession as he is wrestled out of bounds by Quinton Carter. 10-0 lead for the San Diego Chargers. The rivalry that dates back 104 all-time leader. Ball at the Denver 44-yard line to open up this possession for San Diego. Ryan Matthews has been effective so far. Matthews turns it upfield. He's running with a lot of confidence here. Matthews, who has been dealing with knee injuries, various injuries throughout his career. Mays and Dawkins combined to bring him down a gain of a yard and a half. Yeah, it's been a good first half for Ryan Matthews. He already carried the ball 12 times. 56 yards on the ground. Most of his work on the perimeter. Showing off the speed. Uh, there was some question as to whether he would even start today. But he looks... 100% healthy. And a lot of running plays for San Diego, so they're not exposing the offensive line, which is a mishmash of a group because of all the injuries. Rivers to throw, one on one coverage, and didn't turn around on the play. Vincent Brown with Andre Goodman, and not on the same page. We asked Rivers about Brown and his development. He said it's really just his third game playing significant time, and there's a lot of stuff that he just hasn't seen yet. And River gets a shot right there. He knew he pressure was coming, but that's working with the rookie. Tough to get that communication, that nonverbal communication as to when to throw and anticipate that back shoulder throw. Brown was going deep. Rivers had to get rid of it. So now a third and eight for San Diego after starting out with excellent field position. Michael goes in motion. Play clock is down to one. Rivers with a deep drop. Pocket collapsing, little floater, and Tolbert unable to bring it in. DJ Williams, the linebacker, matched up with Tolbert, and it's fourth down for San Diego. And that was the matchup that Rivers wanted. He just didn't quite have enough time to get the ball out to Tolbert where he could make an easy catch. Tolbert has excellent hands, 42 catches on the season. Couldn't pull that one in. And the field position wasted by San Diego on a three and out. Mike Cypress is on. And Eddie Royal standing at his own eight yard line for Denver. Flag is thrown. Now, I so think this Denver might have called the timeout. Time out. Denver, they're first. That guy's running all over the field, timeout. trying to get off the field before the ball was snapped. It would have been 12 men on the field, correct? 10 nothing. San Diego in front of timeout. 
10 0 San Diego leads it after Thanksgiving over the last four years. The Chargers have been tremendous. Their record 20 and 3 in post Thanksgiving games as Cyprus able to find an angle. And they will place the ball at the seven yard line for Denver. Coronado Bridge to take a look at downtown San Diego on a beautiful Sunday on the West Coast. Coming up, Sprint Halftime Report, JB and Company, the latest NFL scores and highlights. It's all coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report. Second drive in a row that Denver is starting at its own seven-yard line, and Junior say how. <laughs> you got changed for a dollar <laughs> or a ten? <laughs> That's a great lay. Seau is getting ready for his Chargers Hall of Fame induction. 13 years with San Diego, 12 Pro Bowls, and he was a legend at that linebacker position. McGahee runs into a crowd of powder or power blue jerseys, whatever you want to call it, three-yard gain. Garay and Spikes there to bring him down. Seau's a guy who made a lot of plays in his day. I think John Elway is uh, having some <laughs> memories here as he sees Seau down on the field. Yeah, quite a few quarterbacks and running backs. Hated to see that number coming at him. He played with such fire and emotion out of Oceanside High School in USC. So another running play for Denver. It's a four-yard pickup. Broncos have kept it on the ground throughout most of the day. Some early game headlines. Matt Ryan, big numbers, three touchdowns. Chris Johnson finally busts out with 190 rushing yards. Matt Leinart goes down with an injury. How about that soap opera in Houston right now? T.J. Yates replaces him. And Mark Sanchez, four touchdown passes. Jets come from behind to knock off Buffalo, 28-24. Denver yet to convert on third down until now. Eric Decker. And Tebow with his first completion of the day to his favorite target, Decker. They'll move the chains. Let's go to New York, J.B. and Shannon. Shannon, this used to be a familiar call. Brady to Deion Branch. Watch what Brady does. Steps up. Slides. Slides. Deion. Finds it. Down the slide line. Once upon a time, J.B., this would have been a touchdown. But that was 10 years ago. The leg just gets it down to the one. Ben Jarvis Green, that was taken in from there. 14 teams. All right, I am Dan. All right, J.B. and Shannon. Play was whistled dead. San Diego. Timeout call by the Chargers. Defensive timeout. Their first, 36 their 30 second timeout. That's two plays in a row. There's been confusion on San Diego's defensive side. Decker easily picked up that first down on the swing pass. The Chargers were running all over the place, and now on a first down, they need to use a very valuable timeout. Second time these two teams have met this year. We'll go back to week five. Tim Tebow actually came in to replace Kyle Orton, and Tebow did his best to overcome a 16-point deficit, rushed for a touchdown, threw for a score, but his last-second efforts fell just short. The Chargers held on for a 29-24 win. The last time San Diego hosted a victory since then, five consecutive losses. Longest losing streak since they opened the year at 0 and 5 in 2003. Chargers went 4 and 12 that year. It was nine straight losses for San Diego at the end of the 0-2 season, beginning of the 0-3 season. And let's just not go back to 1975 when we lost our first 11. Okay? Yeah, I, I do have that in my notes. Dude. Appreciate it. And it's Tebow doing it himself across the 25-yard line for a pickup of four. Jacques Césaire. In on that stop for San Diego. And, and the problem with any losing streak is that you only play once a week. So if you lose two games in a row, that's half a month. Four, obviously, it's a month. It's been over a month since the Chargers have tasted victory, and that can wear on you. And it's been the flip side for Denver. Three straight wins. Their season has come to life thanks to Tebow stepping in and Willis McGahee with a carry. Three yards on that play. It was the last five games. The breakdown for the Denver Broncos. The rushing yards way up. 
And obviously, turnover is a huge issue for San Diego this season. They come in minus 10 turnover differential. That's time for worst in the NFL. 24 turnovers in 10 games for the Chargers. Error free so far in this first half. Third and three for Denver. Two and a half to go, first half. Tebow, they're ready for him. And they stuff him just across the 30-yard line. Antoine Barnes. Antoine Barnes and Tommy Harris did a good job of pinching Tebow to the inside there. Watch the move here by Harris as he goes low and then Barnes up over the top. And they were ready for that quarterback draw. So fourth down for Denver. San Diego has one timeout left after using one right here to stop the clock at 226 remaining. Four drives for Denver, four punts so far today. And coming up, Sprint Halftime Report. JB and the rest of the crew standing by. The latest NFL scores and highlights. Week 12 around the National Football League. It's all coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report. Well, North Turner certainly knows what the whispers have been around the NFL. This Chargers team, one win gets them back in it in the AFC West. Oakland playing Chicago today after the 41-yard punt there by Colquitt and a fair catch cold floor. Phillip Rivers and the Chargers, two games behind the Oakland Raiders, Leading the way at six and four. Denver very much in the hunt at five and five. You see the division records. Every team in the AFC West at two and two. And Oakland leading the Chicago Bears in the first half, nine to seven up in Oakland. San Diego has won four of the last five AFC West titles. And they've really dominated the series with Denver, having won nine of the last 11 meetings, including four in a row. First down for San Diego. Two minutes and 19 seconds to work with here into the second quarter. Rivers. Is sacked. Elvis Doomerville. He and Vaughn Miller celebrating after the hit on Phillip Rivers. It's a loss of 13 on the play as Rivers kept drifting back. Yeah, not where you want to go. You want to step up into the pocket. But uh, the speed rush by Doomerville gets the corner there on Dombrowski. And uh, Schilling coming over to help actually provided the impetus for Doomerville to get the sack. We've hit the two-minute warning in San Diego. 10-0 San Diego leading Denver. Two minutes to play in the first half here at Qualcomm Stadium. 124 yards of offense for the Chargers. 82 for Denver. Tim Tebow, 1 of 5, throwing the ball for just 8 yards. Mike Tolbert, the carry. And Tolbert brought down with a flag thrown just short of the 20-yard line. D.J. Williams with the stop. And Tolbert lost his helmet in the process. Yeah, was it pulled off by a face mask? San Diego indicating it's going to work against Denver. Well, this will give the Chargers a first down if it's a personal foul penalty. Personal foul. Defense, number 55. Mm. Grabbing the helmet and pulling it off of another player. The 15-yard penalty results in an automatic first down. Tolbert, a former fullback. D.J. Williams started his collegiate career at Miami as a fullback, and he gets called for a costly penalty here. Well, it was second down and 23, and now this changes uh, Norv Turner's thought process a great deal. You know, if anything, Dan, Denver was going to use its timeouts. Who do you want to call the face mask on there or the pulling off of the helmet? Take your pick. There were three defenders in the area. Looked like it might have been Doomerville. First down for San Diego, just across the 30-yard line with a 10-0 lead. Play clock down to one, and Phillip Rivers calls a timeout. Chargers not on the same page. They've just used their final timeout of this first half. San Diego Chargers at four and six. The Broncos at five and five. 
Tim Tebow, who's led the Broncos to three straight wins, but not a whole lot of highlights to speak of in this first half for Tim Tebow, and his team is in a 10-point hole. One fifty-six to play, second quarter. Shotgun for Rivers. Ball knocked up in the air and incomplete. Marcus Thomas there defensively and again Rivers having a tough time getting that ball off cleanly. Six of 13 for just 63 yards. Watch Thomas at six foot three with the right hand. Eyeing the quarterback, it's a heck of an athletic play, getting blocked by an offensive man and still having the wherewithal to get up and knock that ball down. Check, check. Second and ten for San Diego. Working from the gun, Rivers. Vincent Jackson carrying that momentum downfield and Rivers throw was short to Jackson in a matchup with Champ Bailey. And this is a, an important third down because Denver still has two timeouts and San Diego's offense just looks totally out of sync right now. They were the beneficiaries of a personal foul penalty on that second and 23 but they haven't been able to take advantage of that new life. And Phillip Rivers has been very streaky. He started one of five. He connected on his next five passes. Since then, he's 0 of 4. Third and 10. They'll go conservative to Tolbert. And the fans react. Doomerville with a stop. Along with Wesley Woodyard. Denver's going to get the football back. Timeout call. It's been a year full of frustration for Phillip Rivers. <laughs> Uncharacteristic turnovers this season. No major mistakes here today, but the offense has lacked any kind of rhythm. Eddie Royal off the punt return. Stays on his feet and takes it out near midfield. Denver's going to get an opportunity here with a minute 27 to go. In this first half, Darrell Stuckey with the stick on special teams. 30-yard return for the dangerous Eddie Royal. Well, he averages 46 yards per punt return so far this year. He had a touchdown against the Raiders. And remember, Cassius Vaughn, their regular punt returner, went down with an injury early in this ball game. And Royal, very valuable as a receiver and special teams. Give the Broncos and Tebow great field position and a timeout to work with. Royal had an 85-yard punt return for a touchdown, so that's why the numbers are so skewed. He's only returned punts a couple of times this year, but he's been effective. First and 10 for Denver in San Diego territory. Chargers with a 10-0 lead. Tebow to throw it. Tebow to run it. And veers out of bounds. Tebow made one man miss cam thomas and then forced out with dante hughes over there in a gain of three on the play it's a, it's a great straight arm he's got those big guns doesn't he biggest arms a quarterback <laughs> i've ever seen since bobby douglas he always seems to make the first guy miss whether with his legs or that time just overpowering him with that big gun right there guns or biceps on him. oh thanks yeah. i had to check my glossary of turns Google that one. Tebow. Strong throw, middle of the field. Connects with Daniel Fells, who coughs it up. It's still loose, too. Look at him diving for this ball. San Diego thought they had it, and it's Denver getting it back. That was a great job by Paul Oliver punching the ball out. And then it was a wild scramble. Dante Hughes had a shot at it. Quentin Jammer had a shot at it. And eventually Orlando Franklin, the rookie offensive lineman, came away with it. Oliver knocked it free with a left hand. Looked like Tommy Harris tried to pick that ball up and run with it. So Denver maintains possession inside the 25. to play the clock stopped based on a change of possession so they didn't have to use a timeout Tebow play fake 
Tebow steps up, breaks a tackle, spin move, and gets leveled. He just took a shot from Travis LeBoy. It's a gain of two and a flag thrown back at the 14-yard line. A little contact, 23 of the defense. Five-yard penalty results in an automatic first down. And it's the veteran Quentin Jammer called on the penalty with an even one minute to play first half. This is almost what you expect from Denver at the end of a ball game. They're doing it at the end of this first half. San Diego offensively was terrible last time they had the ball. A great punt return by Royal, and now it's all Tebow and the Broncos. They should just tell Tebow it's the fourth quarter. <laughs> Every play. Pump fake. Tebow throws. Touchdown, Broncos. Eric Decker wide open. And Tebow with a strike to put Denver right back in it. 18 yards on the hookup. Yeah, just a great throw by Tebow. He does throw the slant routes and the post routes very well. And he just let this one fly. Decker from the left side of the screen. Oliver late getting over there. He gets in behind Dante Hughes. And Decker celebrates with a wall slam of that ball. But it's just a real simple out and up move. Real subtle move by Decker for the touchdown. Eighth touchdown of the season for Eric Decker. Second year wide out for Minnesota. He came in tied for fourth in the NFL in receiving touchdowns. Matt Prater on for the extra point. 10-7 San Diego with 55 seconds to play. First half. Denver was in jeopardy of coughing up the football. San Diego didn't take advantage. And then the Broncos put seven on the board. Tim Tebow. A little magic at the end of the second quarter. Ten seven San Diego leading Denver 55 seconds left to play first half I and Eagle Dan Fouts our producer Bob Monsbach director Suzanne Smith and the rest of our CBS crew a four play 46 yard drive Decker with the 18 yard reception from Tebow those two have certainly developed a quick chemistry. We asked Decker about Tebow, and he said, look, he's a winner. What you see on TV is who he really is. He's just a regular guy in the locker room, and he works harder than anyone I've ever been around. Works, works before practice, obviously during and after, and it's paying off. Trader, the kickoff. Richard Goodman's going to take it out. Stutter step, and he is bottled up at the 12-yard line. Go back to the touchdown. You see combination route here. This little swing route will affect Dante Hughes here as Decker goes right by him. And there is the uh, strike from Tebow for the touchdown, and that made that man very happy. Denver Broncos, not a lot of offense to speak of in the first half, but they get it when they need it. San Diego has no timeouts remaining. Denver has one. 52 seconds left on the clock. Shotgun, Rivers on a handoff for Tolbert. Tolbert breaking loose. Tolbert able to take it to the second level with a penalty marker thrown out across the 30-yard line. They're going to get Vincent Jackson for holding on the perimeter as Tolbert broke loose. And another mistake by San Diego's offense here at the end of the first half. Yeah, Tolbert had already busted through. Holding number 83 in the offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. As San Diego right now ought to just uh, go into the kneel-down formation here. Here's the hold on the outside on Champ Bailey. Easy call for the officials by on Vincent Jackson. San Diego's played in a lot of close games. Seven of the Chargers' ten games have been decided by seven points or less. They've got a three-point lead with 44 seconds to play first half. On the ground for Tolbert, gets banged down as he crossed the 15-yard line. Five-yard gain for Tolbert. And it looks like the Chargers are just going to let the clock run out here. 
So San Diego in a desperate situation suffering through a five game losing streak. They had it going with a 10 nothing lead but Denver off a strong punt return from Eddie Royal. Gets the touchdown Tebow to Decker to cut the Chargers lead to 10 7 at the break. End of the first half here in San Diego. We'll be back. Sprint halftime report. JB and company. After this message and a word from your local station, this is the NFL on CBS. There in San Diego, Tebow time came late in the second quarter as the Broncos were able to cut into the Chargers' lead. Rivers had it rolling during a stretch, but it's been a streaky game so far for Phillip Rivers and the Chargers offense. 10-7 as we get you ready for second half action. Right now, let's take a look at the droid razor play presented by Motorola. And it was right at the end of the first half. A great little pump fake there. Moved the corner, 33, Dante Hughes by Tebow. Decker gets in behind him for the touchdown, and, and it's almost exactly the way the Broncos seem to win ball games. They just never give up. They believe in themselves offensively and defensively, and the big play came on special teams, the Eddie Royal punt return. Ian Eagle along with Dan Fouch. It's not pretty, and the Broncos have basically admitted that, but it's been effective, and on Sundays, a win is a win any way you slice it. And San Diego has played error-free. The one error they made, though, is at the end of the first half when they had a chance to recover a fumble by David Fells, and they could not get on that ball. Uh, Tommy Harris tried to pick it up, but uh, it's going to be an interesting second half. San Diego gets the ball to start the second half, and when you look at the how even this uh, ball game is just a three point game. You can see total yards very even there. Most of Denver's yards coming there at the end of the first half. Crucial game here for the San Diego Chargers at four and six trying to stop the bleeding. Denver Broncos trying to keep this roll going. Four and one since Tim Tebow became the starter for Phillip Rivers and company. Well, just a few years ago, the Chargers were 4-8 and eight in 2008 when they came back to win the division, actually topped the Denver Broncos. And that was the end of Mike Shanahan's tenure as head coach and the head of football operations for the Broncos. Eric Decker will take a knee. Denver will have the football to start play in this third quarter. San Diego in front, 10-7. So it took a while for the Broncos punt 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 and a touchdown right at the end of the second quarter. Yeah the great touchdown pass by Tebow right on the money to Eric Decker. They're really establishing a pretty good relationship. Those two worked as a rookies last year and uh, that, that hard work starting to pay off and show up on Sundays. Denver has won three straight on the road. Haven't won four in a row away from home since 2006. Give us to McGahee to open up this second half. And McGahee is ruled down just short of the 30-yard line. It's an eight-yard gain for the veteran Willis McGahee. That's a similar play to the way the, the Broncos started the ball game. A dive play to McGahee right here. And uh, he gets tripped up, or does he trip on his own here? Looked like uh, Sean Phillips may have just swiped at his legs to knock him off his feet. Second and two for Denver. 132 total yards Go. for the Broncos. McGahee upended by Donald Butler, the linebacker. No gain on the play. Statistical comparison of the quarterbacks. Rivers, very modest numbers in the first half. Tebow with a touchdown pass to Decker. Rushing numbers, McGahee, 53 yards. Matthews got off to a great start. Then we saw more of Tolbert in the second quarter. And receiving numbers, Gates with a touchdown catch. Decker for Denver. Third right. and two for the Broncos. Empty backfield. Shotgun formation. Go. Tebow will throw. Drop. Jeremiah Johnson, second-year pro from Oregon. In a matchup with the safety Paul Oliver and the Broncos three and out to start this second half. And that's the second time the Tebow's hit a receiver. First half was Eddie Royal, but this is a good throw on the slant route. Right to the body. A little bit low, but still you've got to make that catch. That would have moved the chains for Denver instead. It's a punt for Britton Colquitt. And remember, McGay got eight yards on first down. Looked like the Broncos are going to be rolling. 
Creighton, the return man. Flag is down back at the 22 yard line. And Creighton gets buttoned up. All right, Matthew. At the 16 by David Bruton on special teams. A 56 yard punt. This is going to be holding against the Broncos, so that will uh, negate Friday that kick. beautiful punt. Holding number 35 of the kicking team. 10 yard penalty, still fourth down. And it's Lance Ball called on the hold on special teams. So a redo here for Denver. John Fox, actually an assistant coach for the San Diego Chargers, going back to the Bobby Ross days. John telling us that his first year with the Chargers, 1992, that team started 0-4 and they made the playoffs, the only team in NFL history to ever do that. Yeah, he's pretty proud of that fact. Played his uh, college ball at San Diego State. Had to get a few tickets, not too many tickets for this one. Well, his dad's in Fallbrook, which is about 50 minutes north. He's got two brothers in Palm Desert, about two hours northeast of San Diego. Chargers would have had the ball at the 16-yard line. And right now, Creighton is standing at his 35 to return this Colquitt punt. Colquitt in his second stint with the Denver Broncos. He was waived back in 2009. Line drive. Creighton. And it lined up perfectly at the 36. And Creighton is tripped up at the 45. Dante Rosario with the stop. A lot of history between these two teams. The Orange Crush and the Superchargers through the years. They've had some great battles. A big one here today in San Diego in the AFC West. Chargers currently in last place in the AFC West. Chargers have scored in their opening possession of the second half in their last four games. And they've got a 10-7 lead on Denver with excellent field position to start this third quarter. Ryan Matthews in the backfield. Rivers to throw it on first down. Pocket collapsing. Rivers floats one to the outside. Coming back for the football. Vincent Brown turning it upfield for a huge gain on first down. Inside the 25. It'll go down as a 30-yard pass play for San Diego. And this is twice now that Rivers has been able to find Vincent Brown. Single coverage, and Rivers just barely gets this one off as his pocket collapses. But it's a rookie against rookie there. And Brown with a huge play. And the costly penalty on the first punt cost Denver field position. San Diego would have been pinned back in the 2016. Running play, Matthews takes a pop from Joe Mays. We always talk about hidden yardage. That was a 29-yard penalty, it basically, because of the holding. How about this tackle here as Matthews tries to bounce to the outside and airs and said, he jumps to the inside, and it's 51. Joe Mays with another good play on the perimeter. San Diego trying to put an end to this free fall. Five consecutive losses for the Chargers. Here comes the rush. They handle it. Rivers throwing off his back foot. Too high for Gates. And a matchup with the safety, Quentin Carter. And it's third and long for the Chargers. Now Rivers is getting what he wants. Coverage, throwing the ball to his receivers that are covered by Quentin Carter. But that time, again, the pass rush sped Rivers up. He had to throw it off balance and just let it go too high for Gates. Gates didn't play in the first meeting because of a foot injury. Had a touchdown last week in the loss to Chicago. Touchdown earlier today. Two catches for 14 yards. Third and 11 now for San Diego. Motion man is Creighton. From the gun, Rivers. Strong pass over the middle to Gates and a flag thrown as Gates is brought down inside the 10. 17-yard hookup, Wesley Woodyard over there defensively. Pass, prior to the pass, illegal contact, number 52 of the defense. That penalty is declined, the result of the play is the first down. So Rivers is now 8 of 17 for 110 yards. Third catch of the day for Gates, and the Chargers are threatening. Gates coming from this side of the screen, guarded by number 52. There's the grab right there. How about the catch by Gates? 
Perfect throw by Rivers. First and goal at the nine. Chargers lead by three. <laughs> Trying to pound it on the ground at Tolbert. Penalty marker on the play as Tolbert picks up a yard and a half. Roderick Bunkley making the play defensively. Holding. Number 70 of the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Still first down. And it is Steven Schilling. We have not seen a lot of mistakes from this offensive line patchwork group with Schilling the sixth round pick out of Michigan starting at left guard you've got Tony Mall who was just recently picked up by the team out of necessity they needed another body starting at right guard and Brandon Dombrowski in for the injured Marcus McNeil at left tackle and that's three penalties against the Chargers this afternoon for just 25 yards that was a big one though and they're missing that point about 970 pounds between the three of them. <laughs> First and goal from the 19. Rivers over the middle to Gates in a modest game of five. DJ Williams with a smack on the tight end, Gates. And Rivers obviously happy to have Gates back. He told us that this is uh, as healthy as he's seen Gates all year. He even felt that in practice. He looked like his old self, even the way he was carrying himself with a lot of confidence. So far today, Gates four catches 36 yards and a touch. Now this has been the money area for Gates throughout his nine year NFL career. Dealing with a foot and toe problems carried over from last year into this year. Second and goal now for San Diego. Early stages third quarter. River shotgun looks ends a high throw incomplete trying to force it to Gates. Third and goal for the Chargers. Now the Broncos know that uh, just what you talked about the effectiveness of Gates look at uh, how DJ Williams picks him up and that ball thrown out of the back of the end zone but uh, the Broncos are well aware where number 85 is that was a similar route that he caught the touchdown the six yarder in the first half. This is still the number seven ranked offense in the NFL but only number 12 in scoring. Third and goal for San Diego. 10-7 lead. Rivers deep drop. Throws on a crossing route. Tolbert breaks the tackle, but cannot take it any farther than the six-yard line, and it's fourth down. Brian Dawkins with a stop. So field goal unit comes on for San Diego. Nick Novak, who set a new career high earlier today with a 53-yarder. Much shorter attempt coming up for Novak. Broncos did a great job on that play and the previous play dropping eight into the secondary just not giving Rivers anything in the end zone he had to come down to total 25 yard attempt Chargers attempting to score on their opening drive of the second half for the fifth consecutive game Novak nails it for a 13 7 lead nine and a half to play we're in the third quarter in San Diego Thirteen seven, San Diego leading Denver. Third quarter here at Qualcomm Stadium, nine twenty four to play. Decker goes Go. in motion on the first and ten from the twenty five. Nagehi. They had that one sniffed out, led by Takio Spikes. Loss of six on the play. For TV's hottest crime solvers, it's never just another day in paradise. Catch Hawaii 5 -0. That's tomorrow only CBS. You can almost sense the urgency that uh, Takeo Spikes talked to us about. He says that, that uh, time is running out. The window is closing on the Chargers. A must win here. Second and 16 run the option. Tebow on the pitch. A little bit offline. And rolls out of bounds along the sideline. Lance Ball. No harm done. But not a crisp exchange there on the pitch. Yeah, Loss of two. Yeah, good job on the uh, pitch play. Forcing the quarterback. Travis LeBoy got there quickly on Tebow. And that forced the pitch to go backwards. And that's exactly the direction the Broncos are going in to start this possession. Third and 16. I hey, wonder if Tebow would just run this ball and have the quarterback draw. Or if the coaches will trust him to throw it. Go. He's going to throw a tip ball. And it's caught by Willis. 
And Quentin Jammer there to devour him. It's another loss on the play of two yards. Yeah, Sean Phillips got up in the air to tip that ball. Luckily, that wasn't intercepted. Heck of a play there, and there's a quick reaction by Jammer. And another negative play for the Broncos. Denver, 122 yards of offense. Cole Quinn is sixth punt of the day. Patrick Creighton waiting for it at his own 40-yard line. This time San Diego got a rush. Creighton, fair catch, called for and brings it in at the 38 of San Diego. A 46-yard punt. 13-7. Chargers playing with a lead. San Diego Chargers and the Denver Broncos. Third quarter action here at Qualcomm Stadium. 13-7 Chargers in front. On a pitch to Matthews. Takes it upfield across the 40-yard line. Four-yard pickup for Matthews running inside. Held a 37 yards last week. He's got 59 on the ground here today. Where can you find the most beautiful women in the world along with Maroon 5, Kanye West with Jay-Z, and Nicki Minaj? The Victoria's Secret Fashion Show, Tuesday only, CBS. Really? Yeah. It's all happening here on CBS. Can't wait. <laughs> you Bart Scott? Second and six. Shotgun. Rush is coming. Rivers gets rid of it. Off the hands of Brown as he came out on a crossing route. Andre Goodman there defensively. And the Broncos are resorting to pressure now. We've only gotten to Rivers one time all day. Chargers have done a good job of controlling Vaughn Miller. He has five tackles, but no sacks on Phillip Rivers ever coming into the game with nine and a half. You've seen a lot of Philip Rivers through the years. What's your feeling on him this year? Is it a combination of the injuries, the offensive line, maybe even his own physical status that he's come out and said, no, I'm fine physically? Yeah, and I think that's the first time he's ever really struggled in his NFL career and having trouble handling that part of it. Here's Rivers stepping up. Rivers, deep ball, sideline throw. Almost picked off by Goodman. He had the big INT last week to get the Broncos back into the game against the Jets. A pick six. Vincent Brown, the intended target, and Rivers took a hit from Doomerville. Uh, and a great play by Brown because he got his right hand in here. Watch him just get enough of that ball to keep Goodman from making the interceptions. Rivers did take a big shot that time. Better pressure by the Broncos on this series. Mike Cyphers averaging just under 49 yards per punt this season with Eric Decker deep for Denver. Under seven minutes to go in the third. Decker lets it bounce. And it turns out to be the right decision, a touchback. Boy, it was very close as it curled towards the pylon. 58-yard punt, a net of 38. In San Diego. Can't ask for much more. This was your home for how many years, Dan? Fifteen great years here. Three, four. From the 20-yard line for Denver, 13-7 lead for San Diego. Running play, and a hole up the middle for McGahee. Busting to the second level, and McGahee brought down as he crossed the 40-yard line. Zane Beatles with a good block, 21 yards for McGahee. Watch Beatles here, number 68. Seal off the nose, and uh, there are just no linebackers there as McGay gets to the second level in a hurry. Great start to this drive for the Broncos on the ground with Willis McGay. McGay, pro bowler back in 2007, three 1,000 yard seasons, formerly with Buffalo and Baltimore, and he gets stamped. It's a great fake to McGahee. He got stamped and Tebow got stamped on that play. It is Tebow who held on to it. So San Diego made the play on two players, one that had the ball and one that didn't. Well, yeah, that's what the great linebackers do is they just grab everybody and weed out the guys who don't have the ball. Second and 12 now. Tebow has been limited to 22 yards on the ground. Lance Ball 
Get the legs moving for a gain across the 45. Takeo Spikes will get credit for the stop. It's a seven yard pickup. But if you were to compare comfort level for both teams, Ian, I think that Denver is more comfortable at this point of the game than San Diego. Why do you say? Well, this is their type of game, only down by six points here. They got the ball near midfield and a lot of time left. Third downs have been a huge issue for the Denver Broncos, even in their wins. They're one of seven on third downs today. That's been a point of contention for Tebow to deal with. Third and five. Option, Tebow. First down. Daniel Fells with a block on the outside. And Tebow able to zigzag for the necessary yardage. Seven. Well, he just does such a great job of faking the ball. Watch how he puts it into the belly of McGahee. The Chargers tackle McGahee again. But Tebow pulls it out, and around the corner he goes for the first down. How about John Elway? Earlier this week on a Denver radio program, he was asked if Tim Tebow was the long-term answer. Was he the quarterback? And Elway was honest and said, no, we haven't made that decision yet. The executive VP of football operations. Shotgun formation. Tebow looking to throw. Under pressure, Tebow emerges up the middle into San Diego territory across the 45. Vaughn Martin with a tackle of four and a half yard gain. Elway's reaction, what were your thoughts? Well, as you said, he was being honest, and his job is to evaluate players, and that includes the quarterback. Remember, he did not draft Tim Tebow. He inherited Tim Tebow and likes what he sees as far as his competitiveness. But again, the passing part of it does need work. It's a work in progress for Tim Tebow throwing the ball. Second and five, shotgun. Running play. And again, he gets stuffed by Niall Diggs. Diggs has been a nice addition for San Diego. No gain on the play. And North Turner has been forced to use some defensive players that were only supposed to play 10, 15, 18 plays a game, a lot more because of injuries. Diggs and LeBoy and Antoine Barnes have been forced into primetime duty. And it was big getting Sean Phillips back because that allows that three-man outside linebacker rotation to work better, spelling Barnes and LeBoy. Third and five. Crowd trying to get charged up to disrupt Tebow. Plenty of time for Tebow. Tebow throwing. Complete Willis. What a grab by Matthew Willis on Quentin Jammer for 14 yards and a first down. And a spectacular throw by Tebow. Looks like Antonio Garay is injured. Chargers rushed just three and they paid for it. How Quentin Jammer takes a knee. Jammer had tight coverage on Willis. But the throw was absolutely perfect. I mean, we should put a clock on this. This was about eight to nine seconds that Tebow had to find Willis on this crossing route. Throws it good and low as the Willis can dive for that ball right in front of Jammer. And now questions for San Diego losing Antonio Gray and perhaps Jammer on one play. So medical staff dispatched for two Charger players. Gray has been helped to his feet. Jammer is still on one knee. Yeah, so much has been made about the throwing motion of Tim Tebow, the open stance at times when he's offline. When you watch him on that play, what do you see from Tim Tebow and his throwing style? I, I think the normal drop back and throw is where he's going to struggle because he's not used to doing that from his background at Florida. He's a great improviser. Mm -hmm. He had libs as well as anybody and he's a great athlete. So you combine his ability to make a play on the move and then the way he competes not giving up on this play and just winging it. Jammer remains on the field. Gray goes off. Cam Thomas is in. Manning the middle now for San Diego. On first down, fake the handoff. Tebow avoids the rush. And driven down by Thomas. Thomas in the game because of the Garay injury. And he makes the play on Tim Tebow. And you know, it's interesting because of the two guys have being injured, Jammer did not have to go out of the game after the trainers came out to look at him. Garay did. So Jammer was able to stay in the game and uh, take part in that pass defense. And how about that?
pass defense by Cam Thomas. It that had, had to hurt Tebow a little bit. Credit for the sack for right. Thomas. It's a loss of two in the play. Second and 12 now Go. for Denver. They run the football up the middle. Lance Ball leaning forward to pick up some extra yardage. A gain of six across the 25. And another bit of evidence that Tebow gets better as the game goes along. He started the game 0 for 4 since that time. He's hit 5 of 6 with a touchdown pass. This has been a quality drive by Denver as well. Tenth play. The football spotted just inside the 25. San Diego 13, Broncos 7, down to a minute 22 to play in the third quarter. Eddie Royal has set up behind Tebow. A pitch for Royal. Can he beat his man? He cannot. Eric Weddle got the assignment, and he makes the play for San Diego. It's a gain of a yard and a half. Now, Greg Mineski's got to be very happy with the play of the defense on this play. You can see Weddle was there for the pitch, man. LeBoy played off of Tebow, forced Tebow to pitch the ball, and uh, they stopped the Broncos on that third down. So Matt Prater will come on. This is a 41-yard attempt. Prater has made 36 straight field goals inside of 40. But this one will go down as a 41-yarder for Prater. Prater connects. 13-10 San Diego. 33 seconds to play in the third. San Diego with a three-point lead over Denver. A special behind-the-scenes look coming up Saturday on CBS. Great tradition. Always a great game. So entertaining. I think Tim Tebow would have been a, a good player in that ball game, don't you? Agreed. John Fox saying that Tebow brings a linebacker's mentality. And he's just got that competitive greatness that you see come around every now and again. He's built like a linebacker. 6'3", 235. Already talked about his guns. Well, you did. <laughs> we didn't really discuss anything. That, that was your topic. Biceps, huge biceps. Fox saying, look, the guys rally around players that play well. Tebow has played well. And he has won over the respect of his teammates in the process. That is the key. Performing when you have to perform. And a few guys have done it as well as Tebow has this season. Were you surprised about the Kyle Orton move? Or it was time? I think it was time. And, and uh, Surprised they couldn't have traded him earlier to get some value from him, although they did save some money. Saved $2.6 million the rest of the way. Orton now a member of the Chiefs. Don't forget next Sunday, the NFL on CBS. Regional action, the Bengals battle. Big Ben and the Steelers, the Jets take on the Redskins. Or the Ravens beat the Browns. It all starts with the NFL Today, presented by Southwest Airlines. Noon Eastern time here on CBS. Chargers will have it at the 20-yard line. Their lead has shrunk to three. 33 seconds to play in the third. Ryan Matthews, 14 carries, 59 yards today. Rivers, 10 of 22 for 122 and a touchdown. Matthews spilled out as he picks up a yard on first down. Bunkley and Thomas bring him down defensively, and that'll be the final play of this third quarter. As expected. Tight one between San Diego and Denver. A Broncos win would put them over the 500 mark. The Chargers trying to put an end to a five-game losing streak. 13-10, San Diego in front. We'll come back after this message and a word from your local station. This is the NFL on CBS. AFC West matchup today in San Diego. Chargers 13, the Broncos 10. Ian Eagle, Dan Fouts, the rest of our CBS crew. How do things stand in the AFC West standings? Oakland with a 6-4 record leading the way. They've got an 18-7 lead on Chicago in the fourth quarter. Denver a game behind. San Diego two games behind. A second and nine for the Chargers to start the fourth. Rivers, high throw. It's handled by Gates. And just short of the first down, Chris Harris, the nickel in 
to deal with Gates. Eight yard gain through the air. Now uh, Gates with a superior athletic move here to go up high to make this catch in front of the five foot ten rookie Chris Harris. Not enough for the first down but a heck of a catch by Gates. Gates now with five catches 44 yards and a touchdown. He does look 100 percent healthy. Third and one now oh. for San Diego. 215 yards of offense 180 for Denver. Pitch. Matthews gets to the hole. Ryan Matthews. Huge rip down the sideline for Matthews. Brought down at the 32 of Denver by Brian Dawkins. That's 39 yards. His longest run of the season. Really a well designed play. The quick pitch to the outside for Matthews. And uh, Vincent Jackson comes back and lays out a defensive back. Matthews showing good speed, getting away from Doomerville. Check out this block by Jackson as he comes back and takes out Quentin Carter. Matthews now with 99 yards rushing. First and 10 for San Diego. Pitch it to Tilbert. Sticks the helmet down and picks up two yards to the 30 yard line. You know, if there's ever a play that may save a team season, that may have been it for San Diego. All of a sudden, they are in Denver territory thanks to that uh, 39 yarder by Matthews. Love the play call, though. Denver was bunched inside looking for the lead over the middle. Dwarf Turner calls up the pitch. Big play. Matthews has two career 100 yard days, both against the Denver Broncos. He's on the point of topping 100 for the third time. Second and eight. Time in play. Rainbow delivery to Vincent Brown, and it's broken up. Andre Goodman with good tight coverage. Ball thrown perfectly just to the outside. But you can see that uh, Brown could not get his left hand up there. Good job by Goodman. Took a stab at it with the right hand and Goodman maintained his position. Third and eight now for San Diego. They've got three veterans on that back line with Goodman, Dawkins, and Bailey, and then a lot of youth. Carter and Chris Harris both have been the Rockets! Rockets difference Bill! makers as rookies. Harris out of Kansas, Carter out of Oklahoma. Third and long. River steps. He throws in stride. Creighton couldn't haul it in. And it looked like the momentum would have carried him to that first down line, or at least very close to it. And now San Diego is looking at a 48 yard field goal attempt. Now this is again about the third time we've seen this today from San Diego receivers. Rivers just slightly off target and the receivers not able to haul it in. You're right Ian. I think he might have got real close to the first down at least close enough to make Turner think about going for it on fourth. 48 yard attempt for Nick Novak converted from 53 yards away earlier. This 48 yard attempt and he just pushed it to the right. No good. Denver takes over down by three with 12 33 remaining in the fourth and a big miss by Novak. Chargers come up empty. This is the formula for John Fox and company. It's been winning games for Denver. San Diego Chargers 13, Denver Broncos 10. 12-33 mark of the fourth quarter here at Qualcomm Stadium. After the missed field goal, Broncos take over at their own 38. Jeremiah Johnson into San Diego territory. He's got a first down. 14 yards on the pickup. Yeah, good, uh, good throw by Tebow here to Jeremiah Johnson. And how about the block on the outside here by Decker and Matthew Willis? Well, Decker said this is an unselfish receiving floor in terms of blocking. The bottom line is to go out and win ball games, and that would, that's what the team's doing. It's not a glamour part of the job by any stretch. Tim Tebow finds a crack and turns it into an eight-yard gain. J.B. and Shannon standing by an update in New York.
Hey, Shannon, are you a gemologist? Yes. Gold is real valuable. Tavares Jackson, 15 yards. Golden take. 17-7, Seahawks. Goes to the ground, gets an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. They never learn. You know, I haven't said the bird and the beard. Ah, <laughs> JB, you took your quota. Yeah, but we're in San Diego, and it's the beard and the bird All right. here. I'll give it up. All right. I'll go I'll go second in the pecking order, the beard and the bird, although it doesn't well, a really bird, flow. A bird should go second in the pecking order. I, I bow down to number 14. <laughs> you got a little shade going on the left side of that. It's hot, man. Third and one now. That's a blimp shot. Shotgun for Tebow. Inside the San Diego 40 yard line. Three point lead for the Chargers. Handoff. McGahee breaking the initial wave. And McGahee falling forward for a pickup of two. And a new set of downs for Denver to work with. It looked like Antoine Barnes couldn't bring him down. That's twice now that the uh, Broncos have broken tackles. Tebow on the first down play. Good job by Barnes to get inside. Of Orlando Franklin, but just not enough to bring down McGahee. And Shannon had a really good sit down with Tebow in the NFL today, asking him some tough questions. Tebow out of the pocket. And trying to dish out a little punishment there as he uses the shoulder and the elbow on Antoine Kaysen, picks up three yards on the run. Saturday, CBS Sports has some big time games. First, season premiere of NCAA basketball. North Carolina takes on Kentucky. Then, SEC championship game. LSU Tigers, undefeated record. Championship hopes on the line against Georgia. All next Saturday, right here on CBS. 47 yards on the ground for Tebow. Second and seven now for Denver. Under 10 minutes to play. Running play up the middle. And nothing there. Give him a gain of one to Lance Ball. And that's part of the, the option game is you've got to make the defense respect that inside run. So sometimes it doesn't look like much. We've got an injured Bronco down on the field. And that's Ryan Clady. Pro Bowl left tackle down on the play. Step aside. Thirteen ten, San Diego leading Denver. Nine twenty-five left in the fourth quarter. They're working on Ryan Clady on the Denver sideline. Chris Clark has stepped in to replace him in his second year from Southern Miss. An important third and six here from the gun. Tebow looking to throw. Tebow out of the pocket, trying to contain Tebow. He finds running room with a flag down. Tebow's got a first down. Is it going to stand? San Diego pointing now in Denver's direction. It's an 11-yard gain. Will it get negated? Sure looks like it. Tebow's trying to make his case with Triplett. Holding. 50 in the offense. The 10-yard penalty. Repeat third down. And that hole just may have put Denver out of field goal range, depending on what they do on this third down. J.D. Walton. Yeah, Walton just working for his quarterback here. And he's going to get a whole bunch of blue jersey right there. Working against Tommy Harris, but what an effort again by Tebow. San Diego deciding, you know, to just rush three, drop eight, make it difficult to find somebody initially. But with Tebow's scrambling ability, He's making it happen. Before the penalty, they were looking at about a 51-yard field goal attempt. Now it's third and 16. Go. Lance Ball in the backfield. Low snap. Tebow handles it. Plenty of time in the pocket. Tebow dials up the deep ball. Broken up. Eric Decker with Paul Oliver there defensively, and it's fourth down for Denver. Boy, and Oliver gets away with a shove here, too. You see Decker complaining. He's got a right to watch the shove here right there. That's pass interference on Paul Oliver. The official standing five yards away from this and doesn't call it. Unbelievable. 
Instead of attempting a 61 yard field goal trying to tie they will punt it and trust their defense with 841 to play. Colquitt. And over in looking for the corner. And just scoots by Jonathan Wilhite. 43 yard punt a net of 23 and San Diego has some breathing room. San Diego 13, Denver 10. We've got 8.32 to play in the fourth quarter. Chargers get the football at first and 10 of the 20-yard line. Looked like Denver was going to have an opportunity to try to tie the game with a field goal. Costly hold they called on J.B. Walton on a T-ball first down run. And it's Matthews going right back to the line of scrimmage. And they'll give him a gain of one as he cracks 100 yards rushing on the day. Tim Tebow, is he going to get an opportunity here? in a three-point game. Now, San Diego can't go into a shell now. The fans don't like that first down call. They only netted one yard. you got to stay aggressive, stay attacking this Denver defense. Phillip Rivers, 9-2 and two in his career against Denver. 20 touchdowns, six picks. Second and nine. Shotgun for Rivers. Steps and throws. Low throw. And Jackson hauls it in for a first down across the 30. It's a 10-yard pickup. Yeah, and if Rivers could have gotten a little bit better pass to Jackson, he might still be running. Gets inside. A little natural pick right there as Jackson runs Bailey into Antonio Gates. There's the touch. So Jackson was down, but he did pick up the first down. A better pass might have been a bigger gain. San Diego gets to use more clock. 7.15 and counting left in this fourth quarter. Matthews in the backfield. Motion man McMichael. Look at the throw. Rivers slings it over the middle for Matthews. And he is swung down as he crossed the 35. It's a five-yard pickup. Williams and Mays there defensively for Denver. Rivers has distributed the ball very well as 13 completions out of 27 throws. And you can see led the way by Antonio Gates. I wouldn't be surprised if Vincent Jackson gets more balls thrown in his direction on this drive. San Diego 48 plays over 20 yards this season. That's the most in the NFL. They haven't necessarily turned those into points though. Second and five. Rivers. Von Miller with a great spin move to pick up that sack. What a move on Jeremy Clary. Loss of six on the play. They could not handle Miller and Doomerville. Yeah, the, the, just the great move there. In talking to uh, Miller yesterday, he says he doesn't really go into a game with the idea that I'm going to use this move or that move. He's just feeling his way. Remember, he's just a rookie, but he has got some moves. We've seen a bull rush last week against the Jets. That was a great spin move. He sees himself as an offensive player on defense, similar to Derek Thomas, the late star of the Kansas City Chiefs. Big third down. Rivers hit as he throws. Brian Dawkins levels Phillip Rivers. And a man down for San Diego, Brandon Dombrowski. The left tackle is now limping, and the Chargers might be limping to the finish line here. It's fourth down. Dombrowski's the left tackle, and he's uh, working on Doomerville there. Has a big shot by Brian Dawkins. He was untouched on the blitz. Cyphers the punt. Royal waiting for it. Backpedals. All the way back to the 10-yard line. Has a little bit of room. Royal, a blast right up the middle across the 25. 61-yard punt and a 17-yard return. A lot on the line here in San Diego. Fourth quarter action continues for the Chargers and Broncos locked up in the AFC West battle. Fourth quarter has been Tebow time since Tim Tebow took over the starting quarterback's role for the Denver Broncos. Denver trailing by three. 
25-24 to play, and McGahey gets the call, and nothing there. No gain on the play to Keo Spikes, fully prepared. Ryan Clady is back in for the Denver Broncos on the left side of that offensive line. And that was a misread on the option by Tebow. Don't be surprised if you don't see him run that same play, pull it out, and take it down the sideline himself to the outside. See what Tebow has done in the fourth quarter and overtime this season. Tebow won the option. Little fake. And Butler didn't bite. Holding his ground. Butler, it's a loss of one for Denver. That's two big plays on first and second down for the San Diego defense. Here comes Butler right here. He sees the option. His man is Tebow, and he's got his man. See the Chargers. Weddle was already on the outside waiting for the pitch. Well defensed by San Diego. Third and 11. These fans trying to have an impact. Chargers nursing a three-point lead. Just over four minutes to play. Tebow from the gun. Straight back. Tebow, pump. Tebow, deep ball. Brought in by Decker. Eric Decker with a clean grab out across the 35. And Decker is down. The Chargers four-man rush can't get anywhere near Tim Tebow. He has had so much time to throw. Big concern now is how is Eric Decker after that great catch that puts Denver into field goal position. With go back to the protection and Tebow again after a play fake. Nobody anywhere near him. He finds his man way down the field and lets it go. And how about the catch on the other end? He picks up Decker, and now the hand goes up in the air and the ball is on its way. And Oliver came right down on top of Decker, tried to knock the wind out of him. 39 yards on that play. But at some point, San Diego's going to have to find a way to put pressure on Tebow. He's had all day to throw the last three or four times. Watch Oliver come down on the back right there. How did Decker hang on to that ball? San Diego following the scouting report. Basically saying, hey, you want to beat us? Tim Tebow's going to have to do it with his arm. But with that kind of time, Tebow just had plenty of time to figure out who his man was. And it was Decker on that play. San Diego 13, Denver 10, Broncos on the move with a first and 10 at the 36-yard line. San Diego is challenging the ruling on the field of the previous play of a completed pass. Boy, that looked clean for Eric Decker, who cradled the ball on this lunging grab. Yeah, it, it's worth the challenge. San Diego does have three timeouts. Go back and take a look at it. Ball moving just a little bit. Well, he's got his left arm pinning the ball against his stomach as he comes around. I think that's a good catch. It looked like he secured it and was able to tuck it inside. Ooh. That angle just showed a little bit of movement as well. Yes, there is. And remember, this was on a third down and 11. So if it's overturned, the Broncos will probably have to punt back to San Diego. Call on the field was a clean catch. So they would have to see clear evidence to overturn this play. And San Diego has challenged. Got to be indisputable video evidence to make a change. That's the key line right there. And really, can't we dispute just about everything? You can. 
to me off the live look and all the replays it still appeared that Eric Decker was able to hold on to the football and roll with the ball tucked up against his body and with a guy landing on his back knocking all the wind out of him and he was shaken up on the play and now Jeff Triplett is taking a look at it will this drive continue for John Fox Triplett has seen enough he's seen all the angles that we've had after review, the ruling on the field stands. San Diego is charged a timeout. So San Diego has two timeouts remaining. 4.02 left to play now in the fourth quarter. And the Chargers with a 13-10 lead on Denver. Tim Tebow, 7 of 13, 110 yards, and a touchdown through the air. He's got 46 yards on the ground. First and 10, just shy of the 35 of San Diego. And a give for McGahee and brought down. He picks up a yard. Donald Butler got him down low. Chargers have done a good job of stopping McGahee here in the fourth quarter. What they haven't been able to do is stop that guy in the pocket. The offensive line has done a super job of giving him time to throw. It's got to be real nervous time for San Diego. And again, you feel... But very comfortable if you're a Bronco fan. You're used to this type of ball game. This type of finish. 95 yard drive. Last week to take the lead on the Jets. And ran for 20 for the game winning score. Tebow up in the air. Caught by Rosario. First down, Broncos. Tebow just has a knack. Fourth quarter time. 23 yard hookup for Tebow to his tight end, Dante Rosario. Yeah, and Tebow's not worrying about all those things about his throwing motion, balance, step. He's just throwing the ball. He's just being an athlete now, and he's doing what he does best, and that's lead by example. This drive started at the Denver 26-yard line. 13-10 San Diego, 2.44 left in the fourth. First and 10 for the Broncos. Give to McGahee. And runs into a wall. Forward progress will give him a gain of two on the play. The comebacks. Four wins. Week seven at Miami. This is when the team started to believe. Week nine at Oakland to Eddie Royal to start the rally. Week 10 at Kansas City. 56 yards to Decker to give Denver the lead in the fourth quarter, 17 to 7. And then last week against the Jets, the 20 yard run for a touchdown, 58 seconds remaining. And Tebow will let the clock run down to the two-minute warning. All three timeouts. And the ball at the 10-yard line of San Diego. Three-point game. We're back to Qualcomm in a moment. Don't forget, 16 minutes coming up immediately after football, except on the West Coast, where it will be seen at its regularly scheduled time. Phillip Rivers' team with a 13-10 lead on Denver. Broncos with two minutes remaining and a second and eight at the Chargers' 10-yard line. Denver has won three in a row. Four and one since Tebow replaced Kyle Orton as the starting quarterback. Orton now a member of the Kansas City Chiefs. Empty backfield, Tebow out of the gun. Go. Tebow looking, deep fade, a throw, nobody home. It's third down. San Diego with a three-point lead, and now a minute 53 left on the clock. Broncos have been a lot better on third down conversions in the second half, and yet just 5 of 13 for the entire game. The option play a huge advantage for Denver here, but they're going to spread the field and let Tebow operate. He knows he's not getting any pass rush out of San Diego. Go. Third and eight. Tebow. Pump. Tebow breaks a tackle, turns it upfield, and Tebow brought down just short of the five-yard line. He needed eight. He got four. Antoine Barnes helped make sure of it. Well, that's a good decision by Tebow. He has nothing down the field there. He gets Spikes to jump up in the air, and then Barnes comes over and finally makes the tackle. But you hold your breath when Tebow has that ball. San Diego's used their second timeout here, and that's a wise use of a timeout. 
assuming that this field goal is good San Diego and Phillip Rivers will have a lot of time to move down the field and get a field goal of their own. Looking at a short field goal attempt of 24 yards here for Matt Prater. And it wasn't that long ago that Nick Novak missed a long field goal for San Diego. No guarantees in the kicking game. Novak missed from 48. Prater has converted 36 in a row under 40 yards. This is for the tie. Dead solid perfect for Prater. Knotted up at 13 apiece with a minute 34 to play in the fourth quarter. So San Diego will get the football and a chance to end this one in regulation. Game summary, Rivers to Gates for the touchdown early. Tebow answers to Decker. Missed field goal attempt by Novak, which would have extended the San Diego lead and has left the door open for Denver. Tebow's numbers, 133 yards through the air. 50 yards on the ground. Phillip Rivers, no interceptions today. He leads the NFL with 17 this season. And you see the play breakdown. Denver 42 rushes, 16 passes since Denver put Tebow into the starting lineup. They've run the football 60% of the time. Phillip Rivers been sacked twice today, but he's been in, under constant pressure in the fourth quarter. So a great sack by Vaughn Miller last possession and pressure on Rivers pressures dialed up now. Now you think about uh, Novak and what his range is. Well Novak did hit on a 53 yarder earlier today. Got a minute 34 left on the clock. Richard Goodman is the return man. Trainer kicks it off for Denver. Booming kick. Chargers will have it at the 20 yard line. Great kickoff by Prater. Five game losing streak for San Diego. They have plummeted in the a, AFC West standings. Excuse me, I and there is a flag. Look like Denver is off sides. And that's what Jeff Triplett is sorting out right now. Offside kicking team number 30. That five yard penalty will be added to the touchback spot. First down. David Bruton called offside, so San Diego will have it at the 25 yard line. Chargers have just one timeout left. 134 on the clock. It's uh, close, but Bruton is offsides. He's the closest guy to the kicker. He's across the line, and the Chargers now only have five less yards to go to get Novak in range. This is basically the Chargers' season at four and six. CMC, CMC. 13 all. Chargers with a football. Rivers, short toss to Tolbert, and brought down just short of the 29 yard line by Miller and Woodyard. Give him a three and a half yard gain on the play. Clock is moving down to a minute 19 and counting left in this fourth rock quarter. In, rock in, rock in. Tolbert stays in there. Rivers throws to the outside. Creighton's got it. First down, San Diego across the 40 yard line. That covers 11 yards on the pass and catch. And stops the clock. Denver trying to get pressure went man to man in the secondary and Creighton was wide open on the an out route from the slot. See Vaughn Miller coming. Good, another good job by San Diego's pass protectors. First and ten at the 40. Novak getting himself ready for a potential game winning field goal. John Elway making his way to the Denver sideline. In there, in there. 108 to play in the fourth. Broncos crowd the line. Here comes the rush. Rivers steps up. And Rivers dropped at the 29 yard line. Doomerville there for Denver and a loss of 10 on the play. And Denver ought to be thinking about using their timeouts now because they have the advantage. Doomerville around the left side there 
Remember Dombrowski was shaken up earlier in this quarter. Second and 20, third sack of the day for Denver. 40 seconds left. And Tolbert sneaking his way up the middle for a gain of seven. They're playing for overtime now. Yeah, I don't know why Denver isn't using their timeouts, though. This is third and 13 with a lot of time just melting off the clock. Third and long. Rivers out of the pocket. Throws. Complete across the 45-yard line to Tolbert. And that's going to end it in regulation. Overtime here in San Diego. So the decision made by John Fox not to stop the clock, willing to go to OT. San Diego goes conservative after the sack. And it's overtime. And you really can't blame the Chargers for going conservative after that sack. The pressure on Rivers has been constant this entire fourth quarter. And even on that play, he barely got it off to Tolbert for a short gain. Rivers 16 of 31, eight different receivers, but only one touchdown. That to Antonio Gates a long time ago. Denver came in one game behind Oakland in the AFC West. San Diego in the last place in the division, two games behind the Raiders. Coin toss from Jeff Triplett for OT here at Qualcomm Stadium. Hi, right, gentlemen. We're going into sudden death overtime where we have the fourth quarter timing rules. Each team has two timeouts. All replays are upstairs. Each team must have the opportunity to possess the football and score. Okay? So if you go down, you got it? That's not right. Well, unless that's, it's a San Diego State. Right. Well, that's playoff rules, but not regular season rules. Yeah, at the coin, what's he call? Heads is a call, heads is a call. No shot. Come on. It is a head. You want the football. Kick this way. Denver, Denver won the toss. We'll receive. Denver's won the toss. If they go and score, they win the game. That much we know. That's We're what sudden down. death means, isn't it? Yeah. view of the regular season overtime rules and the biggest note here first team to score wins simply put Denver gets the football they score and Jeff Triplett just misspoke that's all they move to six and five with a win I do it all the time <laughs> you get paid <laughs> probably not as much as he does <laughs> <laughs> San Diego will kick it off yeah, Jeff Triplett is just reiterating now to the crowd that he misspoke. Yeah, no harm, no foul. <laughs> the PA announcer here put on a laugh track after that. <laughs> At least the Chargers still have a sense of humor. I think that was the, the musical selection. <laughs> it was just a very funny coincidence. San Diego with Nick Novak and Eric Decker is deep. For Denver. Shorter kick. Decker's going to take it from the four. And the field hurdles and he's brought down at the 20 yard line. That's where Denver will have it as Sharice Wright makes the play on special teams. Tim Tebow in the fourth quarter and in overtime, Tebow has been spectacular for Denver. And he gets the first crack at it here for the Broncos. It'll be interesting to see how San Diego tries to defense him. There's not really a sense of urgency here because it, there's an entire 15 minutes to play in overtime. But they need to find a pass rush. Nickel package here for San Diego. Tebow on a handoff. McGeehee takes that crease and turns it into a 16-yard gain across the 35. And this is the way the Broncos started the game. It's the way they started the second half. And now this is how they're starting overtime. A 
read option play by Tebow with a good read to leave the ball in the belly of Willis McGahey. And McGahey knows what to do with it after that. They continue to go with three down linemen, and they're getting burned here by this Denver offense. 88 yards rushing for McGahee. Tebow looks for an opening. And nothing there as he tried to make a cut. And Kaysen able to hold his ground. It's a gain of three for Tebow. Now Tebow has 53 yards rushing in 17 carries today. But this uh, strike to Decker was the beautiful throw there in the first half. And this uh, catch by Decker set up the tying field goal. Second and seven now for Denver. Go. Off the low snap, McGahee gets the call. And McGahee knifes his way to the 44-yard line for a gain of five. Eric Weddle over there defensively for San Diego. Now this has been a rather ugly game if you are a fan of offense, but defense has been outstanding. Both these teams have held their opponent to five of 14 on third down conversions this afternoon. And now a third and two for the Broncos. Three, four. Fans on their feet here at Qualcomm. Go. This is where Tebow can be so dangerous. Tebow up the middle. Can he muscle his way to the spot? He cannot. One yard gain brought down to the 45. All right, decision time for John Fox. He is short. He's going to send out the punting team. But I know he had to be awfully tempted to leave the offense out there. But uh, Tebow decides after faking the ball to McGay, he's going to just follow McGay straight up the middle. Weddle with a good job there. And then the Charger, Cam Thomas, there prevents Tebow from the first down. He had a Mike Smith-like decision there from the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> How did that turn out? Fourth and one in overtime, not too well for Atlanta. New Orleans got the win. Colt with the punt. Creighton waiting for it. Let's it bounce, and it takes a Denver bounce scooped up. Creighton came back, and the Broncos make the play on special teams. Boy, that was risky by Patrick Creighton. Well, Clayton is going to block Will Height to begin with, and all of a sudden he turns around, there's the ball right there, but Dante Rosario almost caused a fumble. I guess he didn't really have much of a choice because the ball basically bounced into his chest. It found him, didn't it? Don't forget, 60 Minutes is coming up tonight on CBS. Also, The Amazing Race and back-to-back -back episodes of Person of Interest only on CBS. So look where San Diego opens up. Chargers first possession of overtime. First and ten from the eight. Matthews, a blast up the middle by Matthews. First down, just short of the 25. 16 yards right up the gut. And just what the Chargers needed, getting out of their end of the field with a simple blast play up the middle. Good job blocking there. Left side, you got Steven Schilling and Nick Hardwick. And uh, Brian Dawkins with a little business given to the youngster Matthews. 116 yards on the ground. First and 10 for San Diego. Matthews again. This time gets tripped up after he picks up a yard to the 25. Broderick Bunkley with a tackle for the Broncos. About 40 yards more for Nick Novak to get into range. Remember, he missed a 48-yarder going the other end of the field, but he did make a 53-yarder. Again, that was at the other end of the field as well in the first half. There's no wind here at all in the stadium. That was good luck back here. 40 yards gets in to 53. Which we converted on early. I'm surprised. Strong education at Oregon. Shotgun. Rivers. And a sprint. Looking downfield and throws it away. It'll be third and long for San Diego. Boy, that's a mistake by Rivers. There was no pressure that time. He just ran out of the pocket. And the, when he's running out of the pocket, he's losing ground. It makes a throw almost impossible. He sees Dawkins coming, and it's like a phantom. Dawkins was picked up by Matthews, and Rivers is forced to throw it away. And four Broncos giving chase. 
Third and nine. Rivers, 16 of 32, 168 yards and a touchdown. A stop here for Delver. Excellent field position. Movement. Delay a game. Yep. Delay a game. Offense, number 17. Five yard penalty, still third down. You know, he hasn't thrown any interceptions or fumbled the ball today, but the last two plays running out of the pocket when the protection was there and then allowing the play clock to run all the way out to set up a third down and what's that, 14 now? Man. San Diego's last win came in Denver on October the 9th, 29 to 24. We are in overtime with the Chargers and Broncos tied at 13. Rivers hit as he throws. Incomplete. Vaughn Miller caught his arm, and San Diego will punt. Well, here comes Vaughn Miller again. Just overpowers Jeremy Clary, gets his right hand on the ball. Doomerville was there as well. What a one-two punch from both sides. Promising start to the drive as Matthews got that 16-yard run on first down, and then Chargers couldn't do anything with it. Cyphers the punt. High sailing kick. Eddie Royal, no fair catch, and Royal gets blasted. Denver will have it at the 30-yard line. This was dangerous as well as Stuckey was the first man down there and a 49-yard punt by Cyphers. And good discipline by Stuckey. You know he wanted to take a shot at Royal, but the ball wasn't there yet, so he lays off and lets his partners make the tackle. A reminder, 60 minutes coming up, immediately following football, except on the West Coast, where it will be seen at its regularly scheduled time. 10.31 to play in OT. Ryan Eagle, Dan Fouts, the rest of our CBS crew. First and 10 for Denver at its own 30-yard line. Broncos running a three-game winning streak. Tebow keeps it himself. Chargers spill him out with Weddle. Along with Niel Diggs getting Tebow down low. It's a loss of one on the play. That's a good fake, fake to McGahee, but it did not fool Weddle on the outside. Chargers have defensed the option very well today. What they haven't been able to do is get any pass pressure on Tebow. Tebow, 53 yards rushing, 133 yards through the air, and a touchdown to Decker. Second and 11 for Denver. Oh. Decker shifts behind Tebow. Tebow looking to throw. Again, the protection is tremendous as Tebow skies it towards the San Diego sideline and over the head of Decker. Tebow just threw it away. It's third and long. You know, I'm not so sure he was throwing it away, though. It was close to Decker. Just threw it a little bit high, but, you know, as a quarterback, you're not used to having this much time to throw. I mean, he's looking over the entire field. He comes a little bit late to Decker on the sidelines and overthrows the ball. Here's Matthew Willis trying to get the attention of his quarterback. Third and 11 for the Broncos. From the gun. Tebow timing route. Jeremiah Johnson very close to a first down. The spot looks good. And it is enough for a first down. Denver moves the chains here in overtime. And this is a running back basically playing wide receiver for Denver. Jeremiah Johnson only one catch coming into today's game. But Tebow found him on a slant route. Let's play. All reviews in overtime are upstairs. And they're going to take a look at this. Jeremiah Johnson, the former Oregon Duck. Promoted from the practice squad. We'll find out if it was a clean catch. Taking a look at the spot for Johnson. 
Where's the knee down and where is the ball? Is it enough for a first down? Had to get the ball to the 40-yard line. That is hard to tell as uh, Oliver makes the tackle. Knee is down there. This will give us a good look here, maybe. Yeah, we're looking at the elbow as well on this play. And that may be more telling than when the knee hit down because you can see the right elbow hit right about there. And the ball is short of the 40-yard line. It certainly appeared at first glance that that was uh, a first down for the Broncos. But you watch the elbow. And it, the other thing, he's got a white pad on that elbow. Kind of even shows up more. His body carried him out across the first down marker. And on the field, they ruled it a first down for Denver. Remember, the 40-yard line is what he needs to gain. And watch his right elbow come out right there. And the ball is short of the 40. After review, receiver catches the ball. His left arm is down. On the, on the 39 and a half, the ball is in his, strength in his right arm is down. His left arm has the ball at the 39 and a half. It will be fourth and one half at the 39 and a half. Block will start on the ready. Johnson comes up short. It's fourth down and decision time for John Fox. Fourth and a half a yard. Yeah, you know that Fox is thinking about going for it. But remember, Fox is a defensive-minded coach. He likes the way his defense is playing. San Diego's offense is just continuing to make mistakes that stops themselves. So it's, again, a field position game. A lot of time left in the ball game. Punting unit is on for Colquitt. Would they dare try a fake in this situation? Fourth and a half a yard. Now, San Diego has their defense primarily on the field. Cole quit the punt. Creighton standing in his own 11. High bounce, and it rolls into the end zone. Chargers will have it at the 20-yard line. So it is a 61-yard punt, but it's a net of 41. And now Tim Tebow in that helpless position of watching his defense and hoping to get the football back. His numbers today, 9 of 17, 144 yards. Threw for a touchdown, 19 rushing attempts for 53 yards. And he started the game 0 for 4. So you can see how the good pass protection and a little Tebow magic has worked. Or if Turner could use a little magic right now. San Diego Chargers. They got to start thinking about getting the ball to Antonio Gates. Rivers to throw on first down. Makes the connection to Vincent Brown, who has spun down by Goodman in an 11-yard game. The Oakland Raiders have won, so the Raiders move to 7-4 and four in the AFC West. Denver is a game and a half behind Oakland. San Diego, two and a half off the pace. Chargers have been in a free fall. Five straight losses. Longest losing streak for the Chargers since 2003 when they started the year 0-5. First and 10 for San Diego. Just across the 30. Rivers. Able to get rid of it in a crowd. Randy McMichael spinning for a four-yard gain. D.J. Williams, the linebacker. Michael had a big catch in the first half, but uh, what an advantage the Chargers have with him and Gates. Big bodies working over the middle. We haven't seen uh, Vincent Jackson have the ball thrown in his direction as of late. He's going to be matched up with Champ Bailey one more time. Jackson has been held in check. Two catches for 25 yards today. Second and six now for the Chargers. On the ground, Matthews trying to push the pile. He'll gain a yard and a half, two yards on the spot. Robert Ayers slotting over to make the play. Nick Novak, 53-yarder earlier today. 
a new career long for him. Target line would be at the 34 yard line of Denver. Novak replaced Nate Kading, who was placed on injured reserve after tearing his ACL. Left knee. Opening kickoff of the season for San Diego. We are under seven minutes to play now in OT and a timeout. Denver. So the Chargers will face a third and four. Well, you remember the last time the Chargers had a critical third down and about this distance they ran that little pitch play out to Ryan Matthews who picked up a lot of yards 39 yards on the carry. It'll be interesting to see what uh, Norv Turner this is a, a little bit longer that that play was about a third and one but a lot of options especially with Antonio Gates now to get Novak within range they need about 30 yards or so. Novak went out on the field to take a practice swing at one for and the official said get off the field. Sun setting in San Diego will the sun set on the Chargers season at four and six. They've won four in a row in the series over the Broncos nine of their last 11 and now a third and four with 648 to play in overtime. <laughs> River steps, guns it, complete. Antonio Gates has got a first down. They needed four. They picked up five. Chris Harris with the tackle. And the Broncos came with pressure that time, exposing Cliff Chris Harris with Antonio Gates. Watch Gates move to the inside, pivot back to the outside. How many times have we seen that route from Antonio Gates? Nice short throw, too, for Rivers. We come up on six minutes remaining in overtime. New set of downs for San Diego to the ground and Tolbert. Sticks the helmet down and picks up three yards on the play. Joe Mays in on that stop for Denver. Again, no wind here at all today. Just a spectacular day. Temperatures in the 80s. Air very dry as the wind what wind there has been here in San Diego lately blowing from the desert so it's nice and dry here ball will carry clock is ticking 538 coming left in overtime the last tie in the NFL November 2008 Philadelphia and Cincinnati the famous Donovan McNabb game Rivers throws tip ball flags are down Looked like Miller was offsides rookie mistake for Vaughn Miller trying to get a jump Offside defense number 58. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Nine penalties costing them 63 yards today, Dan. Well, yeah, now they're moved the Chargers across midfield. You're looking at about 15 yards to get Novak to his range. Second and two now into Denver territory at the 49. Gates goes in motion. Matthews in the backfield. Matthews, great cut. Matthews brought down at the 35. Able to get out in space and sprint for 14. Maul and Schilling with good blocks up front. Well, it's to the right side, as you said, Ian. Hardwick with a good seal block there. Clary with a good one. Looked like Doomerville just ran right by Matthews as he cut up the middle. Dawkins with a touchdown saving tackle. And a career high, 134 yards rushing for Ryan Matthews. Ball is now at the 35 yard line of Denver to crowd the line. Matthews hit by Dunkley. Two yard gain for Matthews. Down to 437 left in overtime. And a field goal from here would be about 51 yards for Nick Novak. Second and long now for San Diego. Trying to put an end to a five game losing streak. The San Diego Chargers at four and six on the season. They opened up four and one. Tolbert. 
Angles towards the 30, picks up a yard. Joe Mays, another tackle, combining with D.J. Williams. Nick Novak today, a new career high. 53-yard field goal for Novak. And plenty of leg on that one, on his second one from 48 yards. He just pushes it to the right, outside the upright, both in that east end zone direction. He'll be kicking to the west end zone if the Chargers don't pick up a first down here. Third and six for San Diego. And a loss on the play. Vaughn Miller, loss of four. And the field goal unit will come on, trying to win it. Watch Miller shoot the gap here. Gets inside of Gates. What a great play by the rookie, atoning for his offsides penalty moments ago. Looking at a 53-yard attempt for the win. Colquitt will hold it. Lonnie Paxton will snap it. Cyphers the holder. 53-yard attempt. Timeout was called before the block. You take your chances. Before the kick. Timeout, Denver. Their second charge timeout. It'll be 30 seconds in length. Boy, sometimes you just outthink yourself sometimes, huh? outsmart yourself. I mean, a field goal this long, it's really unnecessary to ice the kicker. I mean, this is a career-long try for Novak. Sure, he hit one earlier today. But uh, Triplett did get the signal before the ball was snapped. And you know, San Diego's offensive lineman heard the whistle, so they stopped. That's why the ball was blocked so easily. 53 yard attempt. Chargers trying to save their season. Nick Novak sweeps the leg from 53 yards away. No good. Two and a half remaining in overtime, and Denver will have a chance. And great field position. They'll be at the 43-yard line of San Diego, and they'll only need about 25 yards to get in range for Prater. And Denver has no timeouts left, but they've got Tebow and the offense taking the field with 2.31 remaining. Yeah, he really had to drive this one because of the distance involved. Again, he just pushes it to the right. Had plenty of leg, just wide right. It's been that kind of season for the San Diego Chargers. And quite the opposite now for the Denver Broncos. Tim Tebow, do I get another chance? Time to go to work. Yes, you do. First and 10 at the 43. Tebow working out of the gun. Two and a half remaining in overtime. Tebow, long ball, too far. Jeremiah Johnson on a go route down on the perimeter. Have to go back three years. Philadelphia and Cincinnati play to a 13-all tie. When a, a tie kills San Diego. That's as good as a loss in this yep. instance, especially with the Raiders winning today. Does Tebow have some overtime magic? Go. Second and ten. Tebow to run with room. Tebow angles out of bounds. First down in San Diego territory. It's a 12-yard run for Tebow. Well, this is uh, a perfect read by Tebow. He saw Sean Phillips crash to the inside. This could have been a late hit on Gregory. Just as uh, Tebow's crossing the line, he gets the boom lowered on him. Tebow was still in bounds when the contact was made. Two nineteen to play. Tebow has carried the football twenty times today. Make it twenty-one. 
Tebow brought down short of the 40. That's a four-yard pickup. Niall Diggs, the linebacker, with a tackle. And now the focus is on Matt Prater. Yeah, I love these target lines, too, Ian. We can tell exactly what Prater needs. His career long was done in Denver with the altitude. So maybe those numbers a little bit out of whack. And we hit the two minute warning here in overtime. Chargers and Broncos tied at 13. Denver could have a chance here to win it. Coming up tonight, 60 minutes. The amazing race in back to back episodes of Person of Interest. Only CBS. Now for the San Diego Chargers, a team that has dealt with poor starts and strong finishes to come back and win the division, but they just can't seem to pull the rabbit out of the hat this year and with I, North Turner's team struggling in key moments. And, he, I, and even when the Chargers were 4-1, and one, they were winning ugly. Yep. And people were dissatisfied. They're so used to the style of the Charger offense, big plays down the field. But injuries to Antonio Gates and Malcolm Floyd have really limited the passing attack and have forced Philip Rivers to adjust. And he has, plain and simple, struggled. And now the Chargers are looking at a possible field goal try coming up for Denver to win this one. Yeah, I mean, best case scenario for San Diego is a tie to move to four, six, and one. And as you said earlier, that's basically like a loss in this division now. Right now, it's a 58-yard attempt that Denver does not gain any more yards on this drive. It's second and six. Go. Give is to McGahee. McGahee breaking loose. Willis McGahee inside the 20. Huge run for McGahee. And now the Broncos are in business with a minute 45 left in overtime. That one covers 24 yards. 23 carries, 117 yards on the afternoon. Again, right up the middle. About four or five times today we've seen McGahee get huge holes and explode through tacklers and then hang on to the ball in traffic. John Elway likes what he sees. Tebow should just center this ball, yeah. Get it right in the middle of the field for Prater. And here comes Prater. Remember, San Diego has two timeouts left. And Tim Tebow heads to the Denver sideline. He has put his team in a position to win once again. Prater has made 37 straight field goals under 40 yards. And, you know, even though it's second down, I you're, couldn't be in better shape right now. Plus, you've got momentum. Your offensive line is fired up. They're going to give him great pass protection. San Diego now is going to, or kick protection, going to call out. a timeout here to ice San Prater. Diego. Their first, say, 30 second timeout. Now, you still have time to work with here. Do, do you consider getting your kicker closer, or you're just happy with where you're at and go out and try to win the game? I'm sure that Fox said, Are you ready? And Prater said, as all kickers would, absolutely, coach. Now, I have no problem going for the field goal here. Let's put everybody out of their misery. Thirty-seven yard attempt coming up for Prater. Polk with the hole. Paxton the snapper. For the win. Matt Prater. He's got it. The Denver Broncos have won four in a row. 16-13 in overtime. And the Tebow train continues to churn out W's. Perfect snap by Paxton. The hold is there, and that is right down Broadway. 
The Broncos move to six and five. The Chargers have dropped six in a row to fall to four and seven. John Fox back in his hometown of San Diego, and he leaves with a victory.